This episode of RP MMO Radio is brought to you by all our amazing and generous Patreon donors. Visit us at patreon.com slash RP MMO Radio to help support the show. It's also brought to you by... Uh, yo, well, hello there. I, uh, it's me, Dardar. I am sorry uh, to take you away from your show, but... Do you know about House Bill 420? Yes, it's before the politicians even now. This one asks you that you call them to pass it. What is HB 420, you ask? I am glad you asked that. It is to legalize the recreational use of catnip. Many say that we want only to legalize catnip for recreational highs. And this one tells you that that is not true at all. Did you know catnip has other medical uses? Catnip in tea has been proven to help insomnia. So you can, you know, get in a good nightly catnap. (laughs) I love catnaps. It can also help with anxiety and migraines and upper respiratory infections and the swine flu. I hate that one. I had it five times last year. Fever and hives and best of all, the one I hate the most, the worms. I hate, I hate that one even more because at least I can rub my butt on the carpet and it helps a little bit. But the catnip is better. So it's even good for indigestion, call it cramping and... Flatulence, yeah. So, uh, some people even rub it on their skin to help with arthritis or hemorrhoids to relieve swelling. It's amazing. It can do so many things. Uh, but I'd use actually some pair of gloves on that last one because that you know you don't know where that's been. And, and of course, um, it makes us Khajiit high as a kite and giggle at the wall and getting the munchies. But that, all that other stuff's like super important too. So uh, call your representative guy today and tell them yes on HB 420 and more yes on the catnip. You're listening to RPMMO Radio. Um, does internet porn know you're cheating on it? Where entertainment and roleplay in MMORPGs have little hybrid mutant babies. Make a note of this. This honor on you! This honor on your cow! This honor on your whole family! And now, here's your hosts, Ashen Phoenix, Siv, Jazz, Strafe, and Yunfei. Everybody f*** off. We, 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 we need to go on a quick adventure. Hello there, role players, and welcome to RP MMO Radio, our 85th episode, Inspiration or Plagiarism. Having that, uh, I've copied everything in my entire life, I know the difference, including that one time when I asked somebody out and I just used everything from an old 80s movie with a guy in the bushes whispering what to say to me. That's called class, bro. That is called class. I was very nervous, but Sib said yes. <laughs> hey, hey, man. I didn't realize that we were talking about me. Hmm? What? <clears throat> there were I, I didn't. there was no other girls before you. That's a lie. They were all just practice until I got to the real big leagues. <laughs> <laughs> nicely done. Right? That's very smooth, nicely huh? done. Yeah, also ripped off from a nineties movie. <laughs> anyway. it's, because, it's because I made him a sandwich earlier. Yeah, she did make me a sandwich. A hamburger sandwich. So, Dang, oh, that's it. true love right there. It hamburger is, right? sandwich. I'm a little jealous, dude. Yeah, it had cheese and mayo. We didn't have any tomatoes and stuff. No, we actually do have tomatoes. You just didn't look hard enough. <laughs> you a whole bag of tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, there's the rub. I knew it was coming at some point. So I got a half-ass sandwich, but you know what? I'll take a half-ass <laughs> instead of no ass any day. You're gonna get it thrown at you. Is what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, appreciate everybody tuning in. We do it every Hello. three days out of the month, uh, except for the last weekend, which will actually be next weekend. Also, hello again. What's for whatever reason another episode that lands on 420? I don't know how that happened. It seems like two years in a row. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I made the same jokes last year, but uh, you know, 
weed. You're, you're so old. Something weed. cool. I don't. It's almost. It's it's there. The dispensaries around here in Oklahoma. We passed it this last uh, election, and they are. Speaking of weeds, they're popping up like the, they, they are, are everywhere. They're everywhere. All of a sudden, every old and abandoned gas station in the state has turned into a weed dispensary. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, <laughs> wow. It's crazy. But uh, I'm getting my licenses in the mail, so I should be well, having... If that fed gets their luxury tax, I mean, hey, mm-hmm. what do they care? Yeah, I, that reminds me. I need to go apply for that stupid thing here in Iowa. They don't have dispensaries here. You have to apply and get a license and all this other stuff, but mm. it's doable. Ours is ours is still medical. And yes, I use ours air, is still medical. I use but air quotes. You can't you can't grow it, buy it, or sell it. Oh, actually, <laughs> uh, what was ours? You can have, I think, six plants of your own to grow as long as you yes. have the license. You can. They grow don't your let own. us do that here in Iowa. You can't <laughs> you can't do any of those things unless wow. it's a, so you a mean, dispensary that's controlled by the state. You mean buckle of the Bible Belt ultra conservative Oklahoma is more liberal yeah. weed laws than wherever <laughs> the fuck it is it's, you live. I have, I have to say, too, <laughs> that the names Iowa? of the shops here oh, are pretty great. interesting. Like uh, the Treehouse. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm like, why would you name a dispensary that but I like the one me, in so. uh, what's that last man standing with Tim Allen. They, his dad's name was Bud, so he opened up a weed shop called <laughs> Buds yeah. Buds. Bud, Bud. <laughs> oh my gosh, that one's pretty good. I love that one. You guys and the wacky tobacco. Oh, which is funny because I've I don't I've never smoked anything in my life in the history of ever, not even a cigarette. Because when I was a very wee baby, I had a lot of allergies, and they told me when that wee baby that if you ever smoke, your throat is going to close up so tight you'll probably die and suffocate. <laughs> No, I'm just going to plead for a two-year-old, but uh, very effective I, in keeping the effective. smoking. I'm just going to plead the fifth. Okay, <laughs> I never. I'm. I'm uh-huh. I didn't inhale. Yeah. <laughs> I just get this mental image of, of Sibs in the '80s listening to smoking in the boys' room, like hiding in the girl's stall, looking around real paranoid. Like I don't know why. I it was under this. the bleachers, Sir Faye. Ah, <laughs> that's worse. Tiny bag of Doritos <laughs> nearby. <laughs> It was Cheetos. <laughs> oh man, that's oh, not even living the stereotype. That was my munchie of choice. <laughs> man, got the munchie. <sighs> I tried it several times and was allergic. And the more you oh. know, what a shock. I tried it in early college. Gave me a massive headache. I said never again. Now they haven't gone back. Yeah. Yes, my body doesn't do anything small because when I did it, it was I wanted brats. That's all. I just wanted brats all day. <laughs> she went full, She went full on German. <laughs> She yeah. did, yeah. <laughs> she was goose. Oh, you're fine. Get the, the brass and sauerkraut, yeah. The police caught her goose stepping down the street and taking over her neighbor's backyard by force. <laughs> I need the brass in my life. I need them now. I annex this pass. Okay. I annex this pool in the name of the mighty Yunfei Empire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I must have not one bratwurst. I must have all the bratwurst. <laughs> Let's go to the Der Wiener Schnitzel and Das uh, Frankenfurter. Schnell! Mark, schnell. <laughs> so, All right, um, I'm done with that. <laughs> anyway, rpmmradio.com. Uh, you can li- <laughs> go there. Uh, .com slash Discord are to we? join our Discord server. Yeah, we're still on the intro. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I just I was trying to get it to come up on my oh. computer, and it's not bringing up the uh, the show on Twitch for some weird mm. reason. Oh, no, I'm sure it's there. Oh. Are you it's sure? there for me, but there's one viewer, mm-hmm. okay. which is probably <laughs> you. <laughs> no, yeah, I know there's more because I can see who's in the oh yeah, in the chat. See, and she I, sees I, you. I, you never know. It's always hard to say because some of these things are not always very accurate. And our it is funny. I've always noticed from one week to the other, we could have like a ton of people, and the next week it's like <clears throat> like your your well, grandma in the background waving at you, like I'm here, dear, and nobody else. But it's just <laughs> one of those, you know. And it's it's a uh, apparently it's uh, Easter weekend or something. I guess. People oh yeah. Do family stuff. It is the Easter, yes. Yes, sir. I, I yeah. Okay, so that wait. time of year when bunnies lay eggs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's celebrate the rebirth and re- resurrection of Jesus. How should we do that? I don't know. I'm thinking uh, rabbits and chocolate eggs. Oh, you know what? Makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I have never, I've oh, never understood the connection. Although I did I, did, see... I didn't either, but I really do love Cadbury eggs. So, I, mean, you know. I got to say, I love them. The... Do you like the originals? Please say yes. it's not the original. Oh, oh, the snot-filled ones. Yeah. Oh, I like the caramel so ones. I can eat the caramel ones. But, the but ones... I can only eat like one because it's like overkill. 
Right. Well, yeah, they're super rich. And there's it's it, it. and it's actually uh imitation mm. snot is actually what it's made out of. And that stuff when I was <laughs> in my early childhood with my, my flaring ADD was like oh, let me think. It was like high octane speed. Oh, I bet. If I could have a Cadbury egg mom, she'd give me one. I would just bounce all over the place. And then she'd be like, oh, that's right. That's why I don't give you those. Yeah. <laughs> she always forgot. <laughs> so. But yeah, everybody, thank you for tuning in. RPM Member Radio, um, or was it twitch.tv slash RPM Member Radio. Go over there and follow and subscribe, just like the finally since it updated 14 days ago, Lord Goats did. And of course, uh, the man flashing 10, who we actually got uh, last time, but. I'm going to repeat it because uh, we appreciate everybody that follows and sticks around with us for whatever god-awful reason. Um, so, let's see. Anybody, uh, let's see, who's we doing role play? I know I've I've still <laughs> been in my funk. Uh, Strafe, you've been playing Fallout, so you're out. Uh, Yunfei, I have, but I do have... Uh, no, 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 Yunfei, she's... Uh, She's using face. She's been taking care of uh, Rahan Art. So of course, God. she has that's all. Sib, Sib is uh, Sib's, Sib's. Uh, I don't know where she's at. Uh, Sib's Jazz, been at the gym, hey, Jazz, man. I ain't Jazz, seen her I'm lately. gonna guess you probably had something. I mean, you're really, yeah. Huh? Woo! Jazz. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess Jazz. by the process Jazz. of elimination, I, I tried to break it for you, Jazz. It wasn't happening. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I know. No, no, Sorry, no, no. He shut went that down quick. I got it. <laughs> so. Jazz, what did you do in yeah. your role play this week? And do be descriptive and not shy. Just this is a safe place, <laughs> and you can tell us anything you want. Oh, how Ooh. nice! This might get interesting. <laughs> be tell careful me more. I'm saying that. Anything. <laughs> He's not playing. He's not playing. Let's Jess. see. I uh, want to hear all the down and dirty. Yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to really spend much time on Seal. I did get to attend one function with her. Uh, and I know Tuesday we had poetry, and I was on Kia for that. But it was uh, – it obviously just lasted for the for that time period, and there was no real development or anything. Just, so just people I, plagiarizing sure? poems. What? Are you sure, sure there was no real development? Well, I mean, we, you and I do, but that's largely oh. waiting. So, okay, well, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are uh, going to go on a trip together uh, to start the process. We're going to kickstart the the storyline we've been working on, which is good. I've been looking forward to that, so that'll be nice. Mm-hmm. Well, we did some of the um, what would you call it groundwork for that. The- Pre game, you pre gaming it. Pre gaming it, yeah. <laughs> a little foreplay, uh, maybe. No, Ooh. no foreplay. Their what? uncle and, and oh, not that yeah. Oh, oh, that's, that's, that's pretty gross. I, I was, yeah, I'm talking about gross. just like role My play bad. foreplay. Like you, you know, you're just getting getting ready to get into the good stuff. Yeah. If you don't yeah. even know what foreplay is. And moose. Oh, oh, oh I love you, Ashley. Oh, burn. That was a cold oh. cut to the heart. That was <laughs> weird. <laughs> Would you like some Sav? Ashley, if you need a place to crash and I, dude, come on over, dude. That's, that's cold blood. I don't, I don't get it. He didn't hear it, I don't think. <laughs> anyway, let's move on with the show. Uh, Look at us. Got the okay. show to so, the most of the role knife. play that I did this week was in Tor, uh, establishing the uh, guild that I have there. And uh, yesterday was, uh, I got to work with some of the apprentices that my character has uh, teaching them some battle techniques and stuff, which was fun. Yeah. But that's really about it. Man. She did get, uh, we have some <clears throat> old characters kind of wandering their way back. Cause I'm in game. So people that were involved in the storyline have come by. Yeah. A character called Demore nice. saw me on and, and made uh, a, a drop. by. And, did you, uh, did you they, say Des Moines, they, like Iowa? Is he from Iowa? No, Des Moines. Oh, Des sure. Moines. I heard Des Moines too. Um, <laughs> I heard Des Moines as well. <laughs> Des Moines. Des Moines is her previous handler, and a lot of the storyline that we had had them at odds. Oops. And uh-huh. then at the end of the the storyline, they kind of work together to kill uh, the, uh, a shared enemy. But then after was she was sim? dead. 
then they uh, they went back to being enemies again. So he showed up and uh, was like, I'm watching you kind of a thing. Now you can and, be frenemies. Uh, yeah. So they're frenemies. That's a very good way to put it. So <laughs> she was just like, stop it. You're supposed to be dead. Can't you die? Do you need me to kill you right way? <laughs> it's like that stereotypical villain to the hero. How many times do I have to kill you? Yes, exactly. <laughs> She's just like, you were dead. <laughs> No, this, this parrot is no more. It has ceased to be. Uh, so it was a funny moment, and we yeah. uh, the only place to role play in Tor now is Fleet, which is kind of like Riften. It's a mixed bag of idiots, uh, or if you know where, or trolls, if you know and actual role players as well as ERPers. Yeah, I so. will say though, because I've been I, I've been at least playing through the storyline. I I tried it with the. Uh, What's the fucking Inquisitor? Sith Inquisitor? God, that's a terrible story. That really is. I see why people say that's the weakest of all the stories. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, so I started doing this, the Bounty Hunter. Now, that one's a lot of fun, and also my guy looks awesome. So I've been playing through with that, but it's amazing the number of, especially on, like, Droman Koss and the starting places, the number of, like, RP guild uh, it was advertisements. Yeah, that's the word. Compared to just like regular guilds, like it's it's like a four to uh, four to five or what? How would you say that? Four to five ratio, like four out of five. Yeah, are RP guilds. Yeah, but they apparently only role play in private because they right. are not anywhere. Well, um, have you seen Fleet? Can you blame them? Actually, I can. It's actually not bad. I've run into now four different role players there. Well, that's good. That were so, that were interesting. So of the and, other fifty around those four, so you're at. Well, about... I have. You should see my ignore list. It's impressive. I don't think I'm hearing no most doubt. of them. I have no um, doubt. I had a guy that was jumping up and down on the table like they all do, you know, because mm, right, trolls are all the same brain. They they lack the, the capacity to be anything else. Um, or they're so just trolling was, you guys because they think you're nerds. I mean, that's honestly. I don't care. He's still a pencil dick. Tiny brain. I don't. Oh, hey, I, hey, I'm hey, not hey. debating that. I'm just telling don't you. Insult yeah. pencil dicks by giving them that much. <laughs> <laughs> so he was dancing on the table. We were ignoring him, of course. And uh, I got a tell from somebody else saying that the guy dancing on my table wanted to know if I was ignoring him. So we had somebody who I didn't have on ignore. And I said, one, this is a violation of toss. I wouldn't do that again. And two, yes, he's an idiot. Thank you. Goodbye. And I put him on ignore. Put him ignore so, <laughs> you know, it's the same thing. Just add to the list, baby. Add to the list. But it was still nice because there are still role players there. They are still trying. A lot of it's a pickup thing, just it, like in Riften. Right. But. Yeah. You know, you have your serious role players, and it's been very interesting. So I've got to say, in this lull of time... It's scratching that least, itch. Yeah, it's 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 nice to be able to find RP and random RP at that, mm -hmm. um, since things have gotten so quiet in, in ESO. Oh, yeah. What was that? What was that? Was that? Somebody sneezed. Oh, okay. Bless you. It was me. Oh. That was a cough, sorry. Oh, okay. oh, cough. Bless you, my child. On cough this... due to cold. The thank day you. of our Lord's resurrection. That's tomorrow. But thank you. Oh. Well, actually, I'm thinking the <laughs> so, so much you know. <laughs> Even I knew that. <laughs> it's kind of a floating holiday, bud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Uh, so, uh, um, completely unrelated. How about that Notre Dame, huh? <laughs> Boy, did oh, that suck. <laughs> that did suck. Although I but will they saved all the art and... They... And and even yeah. the uh, where the, they were really worried about the internal structure when that tower collapsed and they they got in there after the fire was out and it's good. It's oh I did yeah. get some really interesting news about the Notre Dame What's that, that you might find you might find interesting you might not I'm a you know granola crunchy person so it really was cool for me. <laughs> No, Recently, I love, I've never at heard. At least that. you said it, not us. I guess even though I've never heard that before. <laughs> really, it's a you know what I mean. I okay, it. well, it's, I know it's not new, yeah. but anyway, um, there's been a push, especially in France, for certain places to put bees, and um, did you say bees? a lot of bees? Okay, uh, sure. beehives. Right, gotcha. Um, like some of the really old buildings in France and Rome, a lot of these places are doing it because obviously these places are up, you know, really high up, and mm -hmm. and it makes sense. Well, they had some within the roof oh really of of the notre dame uh 
some hives placed for bees. It was the bees. And they assumed when the roof went up right. that the bees were dead. No, because bees do not die from smoke inhalation. Nope. They, they just sleep. get sleepy. They fall they asleep. Just, yeah. yeah, they just go yeah. to sleep. And they protect the queen and they gorge themselves on honey so they can go quite a while without eating or anything while they sleep. And when they found the hives, they were alive. Huh. That's actually kind so of pretty cool. I didn't That's... lose any of the hive, and it was a, it's a large hive, so yeah. it's really cool. Well, there's. A I story thought that was I a had, really nice, uh, positive thing. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good stories from that. You know, the the tower collapsing in on it. They were they figured that would destroy it, but the the old cross was there. The they managed to save. You know, whether it is or not, but the uh, piece of the original cross that he was supposed to be on, the crown of thorns oh, that they found yeah. in year five hundred. They they got those out and. So I mean I heard about all that and then yeah. bees. That's kinda actually that's actually kinda cool. I did also, read one thing that was exalting the power of God because the gold cross was still yeah, standing. Yeah, I saw that. You saw that one where the guy's like it. or gold just, melts yeah. at a higher temperature than everything uh, else. You know one of the coolest things, you know when that tower, that that spire yeah. uh, was was on fire and it was almost like glowing. You know what that was? That thing is coated in a layer of lead, and it was the fire got so hot up in those upper rafters. And because they actually call part of that spire, they call it the forest, because apparently it took almost like yeah. 50 separate forests being torn down and built into wood to build that thing. They yeah. actually called it the forest. They inspected that thing three times a day because it was such a fire hazard. So apparently they needed to up that to you know maybe four or five, but beyond that... But uh, yeah, it got so hot that that glowing wasn't the like the it was the the molten lead just sh- sloughing off of that thing from the heat. That's wild. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of cool. But uh, you know, yeah, it melted it, the lead, but it didn't melt. It wasn't hot enough to melt gold, mm-hmm. so the gold and all yeah. that stuff was still there, which is really cool. It's not as much of a miracle so, as it is just science, but it was still cool. But still cool. That a yeah. lot of the gold covered stuff. Yeah, it was. It insulated it in a way. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of the stuff that was covered in gold is still covered in gold and is fine even yeah. after the I'd fire. actually heard too that like the renovations they did, they had the renovations in order. I think it was like 160 million. And these renovations on that building were supposed to take like the, it was the next 30 years this was yeah. under renovation. <clears throat> and now of course those evil billionaires donating up. So far last I heard it was 630 million dollars to uh, Yeah, you know, they've been getting lots it. of donations. I'm sure it's more than that by now. But uh, can you imagine? So if if a small renovation like that was going to take thirty years, it's going to be we're all going to be dead by the time they get this thing rebuilt. There's not going to yep. be anyone left to appreciate it. I mean, which is well, good. It needs to be done. It's eight hundred. It's if think of it like this: that thing is we, our country is one third the age <laughs> of that single building. Yeah, it's I mean, almost it's two thousand years old. Yeah, or a thousand years old. Excuse yeah, eight hundred and fifty. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's getting up there, pushing a thousand. I mean, which it is looks, really cool. You know, I think Yoda said it best. You know, nine hundred years old, you reach. Hmm? Look as good you are not. Hmm? You know, I got something <laughs> fully funny. When I mean, this is not funny, but I, I find dark humor in things. I just mm-hmm. way I raise, way I have that's why we have stuff you on the show. <laughs> I know. So <laughs> when I watched that, of course, of course, it's horrible. It's completely horrible. But then part of me was like, well, so much. Hunchback live action from Disney. <laughs> we we <laughs> finally sorry. we finally got that hunchback bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they did say that uh that game Assassin's Creed Assassin's that Creed was, Unity. Yeah, I was just gonna yeah, say that. That That's... the scans that they did of that will help Yeah, completely rebuild it. Yep. Yeah, as it was that yeah, cool. that's who would have thought something they did for a video game. That they didn't do on their own, but all that data is just sitting on a computer somewhere. Now, who would have thunk it? Yeah, they'll be able to completely redo everything, almost down to the inch of the way it was originally. Yeah, it's... because they have those digital scans of it. That's yeah. awesome. And which, by the way, right now, because of that, you can get Assassin's Creed Unity for free if uh, from Ubisoft. If you want it, you just have to go over there and grab it for. I think it's got another week and a half or so. Yeah, I'm gonna. So, go so role play, right. right? So role play. So what about you, Mr. <laughs> Faye? What'd you have? Now that we got off on way on a tangent. Okay. Trath left the poetry hour fairly early. He was quite excited. And he was sad that Voli was staying at a ranch for the duration. But still, progress must be made. So he prepped the artifact for travel. 
packed the necessary agents, made sure to double write an invitation to his niece to be there in the morning, and saddled his horse for the morning's excursion. It would be a short trip to the Way Shrine, but it should prove useful. All the things were ready, all the runes in place. He could not wait to see what happened when he activated the artifact. The end! (laughs) That and poetry was good. We uh, had the same people doing the same things. However, we uh, started small, and actually the place filled up. That's good. Yeah. And uh, that's always a surprise. I'm always thinking people are going to lose interest, and then they don't. So that's cool. Yeah. Good. Anyhow, that's it. That's the start of it. The end. The end. So, Sim, you and Faye, anything? I'm I'm still in Fallout. (laughs) But I'm still loving it. (laughs) I actually uh, played a couple days with Indigo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I posted some pictures in general. She nuked some folks. Mm -hmm. No, no. Last night, Indigo nuked some folks, yeah. which was awesome. Finally got his first nuking. Yes. So it was fun. But yep, that's about all I've been up to. Damn you, Fallout. No. <laughs> well, some, you. somewhere Todd Howard's like, ah, oh, thank God there's at least one. <laughs> hey, I was loving it too, man. Hey, I know. hey they need to give me some merchandise, and I will totally support them. Merchandising, merchandising. Yeah, if, if Todd Howard, if you're listening, I'm a huge Fallout fan. <laughs> yeah. he is. I'm, sure, I'm sure he's in, in his mansion counting his <laughs> bed of hundred dollar bills oh oh okay well, i'm glad i tuned into this podcast on twitch <laughs> how about you uni um i've been mostly playing the final update for enter the gungeon and i actually just unlocked the new character today Welcome nice. to the Gungeon. Nice. You got one Sounds like a cool anime. Gungeon. <laughs> it's it's a really fun game. Take them to the Fungeon, you know, because it's like a dungeon, but it's fun. <laughs> oh, Gungeon. <laughs> I know, but that's not the Wreck-It Ralph quote, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, that giant poster you have hanging on your walls. I thought you would have got the reference. You know, I've only seen it like twice. So Dang. Why? Which is odd for me because I've yeah. when I like a movie, the autism kicks in and I'll just watch it like forever. Like I've seen Deadpool, I think twenty seven times now. Or for example, how many times have you watched uh, Umbrella Academy? I watched yeah, I watched Umbrella Academy all the way through, and then I realized I liked it so much, I watched, I watched it all the way through again. again. Yep, mm. <laughs> that's some dedication right there, folks. That is that's. That's some love. Hey, and it was a damn good show. I will give her that. If you're going to binge watch something twice in a row, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, for me, I, again, I've been in my funk, but I do at least have an old story. Uh, second one from my old Eternal Drifter thing with Xanus back in EverQuest. So I'll go ahead and just read that. It's like a page and a half. So just bear with me. If, if you don't like it, fast forward about five minutes. And if you do, stay here. So Eternal Drifter, Broken Jewel. It would go down in history as one of the worst summer droughts since the rending shattered the world. The kind of heat that would crack the skin and dry the throat just for breathing. Many dusty trails were created during this time as the brush was easily broken and straighter paths made, which was all for the better as the less time someone traveled during the day, the better their fortune. Xanis Sulegna, a wandering monk, was traveling on just such a dust-choked trail. Hood pulled over to keep his long, tear-doll ears from burning and the sun out of his sensitive eyes as he watched his feet mile after mile, the little clouds of dust that they created, the only other movement he saw for hours, and the shuffling of his feet the only sound. That is until a soft whimper from just off the trail in a ditch caught his ear. Feet halting, he stopped to listen. It would not be entirely impossible he had started to just hear things, but no, there it was again, a stifled cry. Making his way towards the sound, he saw a girl. She was young, maybe ten or so. He's never really good with human children's ages. They all just kind of looked the same, really. Something about her, though, was not right. 
Xanus looked up and down the trail and saw nothing save for what looked like hours of old tracks. Looking back, he finally caught what was unnatural about her. <clears throat> Whimpering as she was, she didn't move. She just sat there with her legs splayed out and under her with her head bent down staring at a fixed point of nothing. Her arms hung limply at her sides, not in her lap or over the dusty and tear-streaked face. In one hand, she clutched a little brown rag doll with a tuft of floppy hair on the top and big black button eyes by the doll's arms. He stepped closer. Nothing. And closer still. Still nothing. Crouching in front of her, she didn't even seem to register his existence. Are you okay? He asked carefully. Nothing. Seeing her closer, her lips were cracked and bleeding. There was no telling how long she'd been out here. Her fingers, or his fingers, went to pull back some hair from her face to see more of it. That was more than she could take, apparently, as the very next moment she was screaming at the top of her lungs and flailing. Backing away, she stopped and went limp once more. Hmm. Uncorking the water skin and Dabbing it onto a rag, he put it to her lips. Nothing at first, and then she began to take the water in, rewetting the rag again and again until finally she reached out on her own for the water skin and began to drink. Her dirty black hair set back from her face to reveal a rather nasty bruise over her right eye. As she drank, she met his eyes, and glittering like two almond-shaped gemstones in the hot sun, he smiled at her. And she smiled back. It was ten miles down the road that they caught up to the travelers whose cart and feet had left the tracks. They had set up camp for the night, big overhangs to block out what remained of the sun jutting from the cart. The pair of them walked up to the camp, Xanus holding the little girl's hand. It had been only... Uh, it had been the only way to get her to walk with him. He tried just having her follow, but she only stand there. Taking her hand and starting her walking and letting go also didn't work. It had to be this in her hands or nothing at all. In her other hand, of course, was the floppy brown rag doll dangling next to her leg. The travelers looked up when a rather plump and hook-nosed woman with beady eyes came from the cooking pot brandishing a large wooden spoon. What's all this now? She stopped before the monk and the lost girl, three burly men flanking her on either side and a bit behind. They looked all to be related. Uh, no amount of ugly gathered in one place was that <laughs> coincidental. From under his hood, Xanist asked, Pardon me, but I found this child on the road. Do you happen to see anyone that might have lost her? The little girl was staring at the blank spot of nothing before her feet as the hook-nosed woman replied in a haughty tone, Jewel? What'd you bring her back here for, eh? Ah, look at us. It took us an hour to get her to stop following us here, and you go bringing her back. Go on. Get. Get now. She waved a large spoon at them and with her pudgy hand. You left her out here in this drought. His voice was calm, but a glowing ember began to burn in the monk's chest. Of course we did. She's worthless. Touched in the head. Can't do nothing for herself. Just takes up space, eats our food, and drinks our water. Regret the day I took her in, I does. That was as good as a death sentence. Ma'am. What do I care, eh? Take a look at her for a year now. And ain't no one else want her. Better off dead she is. Never know where she is half the times anyway. Just stares off into space. Always having to hold someone's hand to get her to walk or grab an old wagon. The spoon brandished before him like a cudgel. Now shove off and take her with you if you care so much. The long spoon swung suddenly at the girl's head. Xanus, taken off guard by the random attack, was too late to stop the spoon from connecting to the girl's other eye. Only it didn't connect. Jewel, staring at her spot of nothing, had grabbed the spoon and pulled it free, the fat woman's hands whizzing by the girl's face empty-handed. Everyone blinked in surprise, even Xanus. 
The others blinked again, as Xana's hood had slipped when he had made to go for the spoon. Light purple skin and long, tear-doll ears framed by long white hair, all centered around two vibrantly violet eyes, looked back at them. The woman screamed. Two of lar the large sons scrambled back with her. One tried to come forward, arm raised in a meaty-fisted punch. He landed hard on his back after a single kick to the face toppled him. The three others were running and now appeared far off in the distance. Xanus looked down at his new ward and sighed. She was looking back at him, or more specifically his leg, with her bright almond-colored eyes. All right, then. Let's get what water of theirs we can carry and go. I guess we're in this together now, Jewel. And that's the end. <laughs> nice. Uh, oldie but a goodie. Well, oldie. That is a good one. <laughs> I was actually entertaining the idea of, of reading my old uh, bits and pieces of journals uh, backstory for... Oh, Lord. Eric. That... So. That, yeah, it'd be a project, but you know, it's actually not. I've actually had the same idea. I've been, you know, <laughs> of course, I've been plugging away at my computer in a Starbucks so that other people could see me writing. <laughs> no, I don't do that because I'm not a douchebag. But by the way, yes, Jazz Scrivener is an awesome, awesome writing program. That, you like it? That Good. Is, yes. That is coming very handy with all the little notes and locations. And yes. All, it's very, very good. So. I think it's a great idea, but dude, I don't know if I want to dig up all Ren stuff. And I have it, but that's some dark. That's some dark stuff. Well, it is then... dark, but like, I have a lot of background that I wrote for Kiriv <laughs> that mm -hmm. I would really love to read that oh, build yeah. her character, and then I can start reading her journals. And I think well, I don't know it's... if people would like it or not, but I would enjoy doing it. Well, so. and I, I like I said, I've been writing. I've been writing an original thing. It's Xanus, and it's I, I'll go into it later. I'll actually probably do it but one of the things because we've done this for so long now is when i get it done i may i was actually thinking of doing it just like we did those audiobook stories back two halloweens ago yeah. doing yeah. all that and reading it and then you know upload it to youtube along yeah, with the story i mean just like you jazz with your your journals if you did that you could just make a little youtube channel of your for your stuff and record yourself and put it up it would be yeah it'd be nothing at all I don't think it's a bad idea. I mm -mm. think it's a pretty good one. I mean, what's I'll the worst that happens? That. That Nobody listens to it, but as long as well, you that's had true. a good time doing it. You know, I did. I had yeah. a great time doing it. Yeah. So, no, it's it's definitely something I've thought of. It's And it's a lot of fun, I will say. It's a lot of fun to do that stuff. But Me yeah. too, but most of the old stories that I have are about as long mm -hmm. as the one that I sent you. Yes. Well, that that's the thing right now. This I'm, The one I'm writing, it's the longest... It, it's it's getting pretty long. I think it's somewhere around four thousand words now. Which for me, I do short stories. But when I say short stories, I mean like it's a page and a half, two pages at the most. So this is a long one for me. It's it's it is a good a idea thing. Um, that stuff is dark though that I wrote. I don't mm. know, but hey, I might give it a try if I don't have anything going on next week. Yeah, give it a shot. It can't can't hurt. So all right, so now on to the main topic. Um, this one's kind of, eh, it came up just mostly out of just. See, I think it was something we had said on a show once, or I, I just it's role playing for as long as we do. the The difference between getting inspiration from something and then just plagiarizing it, which, uh, good point, you know, uh, is a fine line sometimes. Um, but something I actually and it stuck with me, so I looked it up, and there's actually several quotes on it. Oddly enough, all saying the same thing, plagiarizing each other, but at least saying it in a different way. <laughs> It's not really the case, but um, something uh, old was it my I think it was my Latin teacher had said, even which is strange because you think it would be my literature, literary teacher that would have told me this. But that there's the Romans had already said, like, every idea has already been thunk, thunk up. It's already yep. been done. It's already been created. So one of the, one of the first things they teach you in art school, too, mm -hmm. is there's nothing new under the sun. You can that's, Ecclesiastes yes, one nine. That's Ecclesiastes. Exactly. I was about to say that. What has exactly. and I actually have that on here. The Bible beat everybody to it by, uh, yep. I don't know, a few thousand years. But what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Under the sun. Ecclesiastes yep. nine, which is kind of funny to hear something so negative from the Bible. <laughs> I mean, outside of the, you know, death. Solomon and had an interesting and life. The, the constant uh, people making the same mistakes and getting brutally murdered for it. 
On second thought, oh, yeah. no, it's, it's pretty appropriate. But one of my one of the favorite ones I came across was from Mark Twain, and uh, he said, "There is no such thing as a new idea. It is impossible. We simply take an old a lot of old ideas and put them into a sort of mental kaleidoscope. We give them a turn, and they make up new and curious combinations. We keep on turning and making new combinations indefinitely." But they are all the same old pieces of colored glass that have been used and used throughout all the ages. Mark Twain. Pretty uh, pretty spot on, really. Especially when you get into role play, as long as we have, a lot of the ideas yeah. do seem to repeat themselves. <laughs> you start to see the same stories. Yep. Like, for example, people getting kidnapped every Tuesday. <laughs> oh, please no. Please no. <laughs> I am super... Saying, oh, I've been kidnapped. Someone come and save me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the other one too is uh, this is this was from uh, I'm gonna probably uh, I think it's on on Andrea or Andre. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, Lord. She's a American writer, feminist, womanist, uh, librarian, and a civil rights act- activist back in the you know 50s, 60s, 70s. And she said, there are no new ideas. There are only new ways of making them felt. And that one I actually liked a lot because that's really that kind one's of, a good one. Yeah. And that's really where it all comes down to is when we're doing our characters and these stories, it's if we can get some someone to feel something in the story we're telling in RP to others as well as ourselves. I, mean, I agree. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. I, I just had to quietly burp into the microphone. Next time, let it rip. No, No, he gets a zero. It was quiet. No, no, no. He gets a 5.6 for stealth because I didn't know he did it either. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't hear anything. So it's a big fat goose egg. Whisper of a fault. (laughs) (laughs) So, so is that true? I mean, is that, I mean, are we, is there anything really new? Is there any, any new ideas that anyone can come up with? I know there's new technology, but. Funny enough, a lot of the technology we have actually comes from other people's ideas. Like, uh, there's, uh, we we covered this in an episode past. Mm-hmm. Great artists copy each other. Yeah, yeah, we did. So I remember. Even yeah. Like even my kid, like let's go back to Ringotts. He's mm-hmm. an amalgamation of like three different bad guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, I just I took the elements I needed and I just kind of tried to make my own character out of it using some of those traits. As opposed to, oh, I'm just going to be Artemis and Trary from the Drist books and be this bad to the bone dude that feels nothing, and he's the ultimate assassin. He's that dude. He's the wall holder then, and we've seen plenty of those. Yeah, <clears throat> and you don't want to be that guy, right? But if you do it, what? Well, that's the thing, though. If you can, like, uh, who was it? Uh, you guys remember Shard? Shard was a lot like that. She was kind yeah. of a yeah. wall holder, wall holder. Oh my god, wall holder and a wall leaner. But her character yep. was also she did all that dark and stereotypical like oh I'm so edgy kind of stuff. But when she did yeah. it, she made it interesting. You actually wanted to know more. It's because <clears throat> I think part of it for her was because she stuck with it and she knew what she was doing, and she knew yeah you that, have to be dedicated to it for right. sure. It, so she didn't go out of her way. You know when when she didn't get a lot of game or a lot of uh, you know traction. On some days, she didn't throw a hissy fit and say like, "Well, it's not what I roll playing with me." Yeah, she you don't just do that. Moved on and knew yep. that you know she was building it up. Ask Jazz how many times I stood at the wall as a, just a faceless guard. Yep, because that yep. was the character, mm-hmm. and I hate. There were days I hated standing there because right. I'm like, I'm getting no role play. I'm literally standing out here while she has negotiations. <laughs> with whoever and whenever, I don't know how they're having negotiations, but I'm being a guard. And she would come out, oh, Ringotts, you're still here. And he looked at her like this blank look like, I should be somewhere else. <laughs> so you got to be dedicated to it. If you're not dedicated to it, you're just a faceless wall lurker. Yep. Yeah. And people were afraid of Ringotts. The people that I <laughs> did <laughs> negotiations with were always, like, he's still out there, probably. He makes me really nervous. Good, he should. <laughs> Aren't you worried he'll do something? He won't do anything unless I tell him to. <laughs> and, it was, and then she would say, "So you should behave," and then smile yeah. at him with that vodka oh, smile, like, "Oh, behave." <laughs> yeah. It was always so funny though, because <laughs> even though he didn't hardly interact with anybody, he had a even years later had a people were afraid of his character. Mm-hmm. He he He's emanated this this rage and this dangerousness that I didn't and I didn't pull a tilder to do it. 
No. Nope. I did my own thing. Mm-hmm. It was nice. And it was really you have cool. to make it your own. And literally, I just wanted him to be this ominous presence. You look and you're like, dude, I'm a nerd with his presence. Well, and that's and see, and going into that, you, uh, <clears throat> you, Tilda, and uh, Jazz's husband, Triton, you all yeah. had. You are all in a lot of ways. You are all the exact same character. In oh man, that's too much in one room. Completely different yeah. <laughs> ways. You know, you were you were very intimidating. You were very dark. You were very serious. But each one of you came at that from such a completely different angle. That oh, outside yes. of that core, there was nothing yeah. similar to any of you whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, you were very individuals. But you know, there's only so many different you know kinds of ways somebody can be. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Go to this real quick here. Um, Rentonus in the Discord chat says, <clears throat> inspiration or plagiarism? Oh, boy. I'm going to bitch about George R.R. R. Martin, you and, like, everybody else, <laughs> for a oh, second. My goodness. In my quest for inspiration, I discovered that a song of ice and fire is just pretty explicitly the War of Roses with Hadrian's Wall thrown into a fantasy setting. This world is interesting for its world build, building and its symbolism and whatnot. I'm, I'll admit, sure, but his characters are just people from history in that time period. In most cases, in every single way, appearance, behavior, and their fate, etc. Like Robert, no one really notices it. So I guess inspiration can be taken from anywhere, and that's exactly it. You know, he's mm -hmm. you can recreate all sorts of stuff. Um, as long as you do it in a new and interesting way or plop it into an environment completely alien. Um, you know, the one of the examples we have here for this is off the top of my head, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and Harry Potter. Yep. Well, so Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. And, and Although what was the one you were we were discussing just a couple days ago? Uh Babylon Five. Babylon Five. You were saying it was like yeah, Straczynski of... got most of the inspiration. It's basically a it's a it's a retelling of the King Arthur legend in space. Is what he yeah. It's where he said he got his inspiration from. You know, and that's a, and it's a great. It makes show. total sense. Yeah, but you know, like I said, these Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Harry Potter. These are these at this point. Harry Potter may be the newest of them, but they're timeless. They're classic. They're going to be around. You know, they're going to be around a hundred years from now. But, but to dumb it down. Old smart guy finds a naive, naive young guy, sets him on a path to take down an evil power emperor glowing eyeball. <laughs> Not <laughs> like Star Wars A New Hope, hey. It's they're they're literally all the same story. I mean Yep. It's just the same thing. And, and at their core, that's that's all it is. And that it because of that, if they're all exactly the same, why is each one of them individually cherished and kind of timeless? And that comes down to like what Rentos was saying. <laughs> The details. Also, it comes down to the people who mm -hmm. who uh, are attracted by that. Because you have some people that love Lord of the Rings and some people that don't. Mm -hmm. You have some people that love Star Wars and some people that don't. Yep. It is yep. how it attracts and gets people to feel. Yeah, it's all about, it's, it's kind of like what... You have some people Andre that love Lord wizards said. and some people that don't. Yeah, it's, it's, yep. <laughs> there's, it's finding new and different ways to be, make the same old thing felt that's exactly what it is and mm -hmm. uh so you know but in, in since each one of these stories is epic for its different reason each makes you feel think and grow attached to you know each character in different in ways and even though the arc over overarching storyline is all the same it's all in the little details and that makes makes a huge difference and if you can rearrange that you know you can you know you can rip off Drizzto Erden if you you know you had to in a lot of ways wow. ironically that's kind of exactly what I did with Sanus the the difference was is I had never known who Drizzto Erden was until long after I'd created him and even then even longer before I read one of the books so turns, <laughs> turns out yeah, like, you, well, yeah. shit. If you were a monk that kind of still remembered being a tear doll so it was a little different True. So you made it your own. So yeah. it was, you were still unique. Yeah, he was never. I? Yeah, well, and that goes to the fact of where I got his. Actually, his idea was from Angel from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, was which made Ren really, bad guy. really hate your character. Yeah. He's like, he knows better. He knows better, and he's still playing the good <laughs> shoe. You've been on the. <laughs> you've been on the good side, the freeing side. Let your anger flow through you. Exactly. That's what it was. <laughs> Give in to your hate. You have betrayed your purpose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I like that. <laughs> this is, you, you, 
you for you want to go over this part here you added because I actually like this. Or do you have do you have it up? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to hit the the seven basic plot types because I didn't know. I know this stuff is out there. That's why I ask you guys. <laughs> so. Um... Uh, it's called nerd homework. <laughs> it is basically. That's the thing. There's so many. There's you know, I, each one of us can only know so much. So when we come up with these things, it's like, well, here's what I know. Everybody, add your little two cents if you have any extra. Okay. So there are seven basic plots. Um, one is overcoming the monster which is where the protagonist sets out to defeat an antagonistic force, often evil, which threatens the protagonist and or the protagonist's homeland. Um, and the examples that they give are Perseus, Theseus, Beowulf, Dracula. Dracula? Dracula? I guess he would be the monster being overcome, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a little okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, War of the Worlds, Seven Samurai, James Bond, which Star is Wars. Why- which is why Seven Samurai has been made over in every era in different way mm-hmm. you could possibly think of. It's a damn Bond, good story. James and Bond. also in different uh, different countries, too. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not always well, Seven I've, Samurai. They have, you see it a lot it. In, in Western... There was a... What was the one recently that had Chris Pratt and Denzel Washington was basically Seven Samurai with Cowboys. That's exactly... It was... I forget what the movie was called, but it was it was just Seven Samurai, Samurai seven? but Cowboys. Yeah, it was... I, you said it, Uni. The Magnificent Seven. That was it. Yes, it was. A good, that was <laughs> Which a good. Was also one. made in the sixties. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think it's. It's. I love that one. It's kind of like a Star Is Born. It's remade every twenty yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All, right, All right. What's the next one? Um, the second one is Rags to Riches, and that is where <laughs> the poor protagonist acquires power, wealth, and or a mate, loses it all, and gains it back, growing as a person as a result. Oh, trading places with uh, Dan Aykroyd and coming uh, to America. And- Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The examples they give are Cinderella, Aladdin, Jane Eyre, uh, David Copperfield. I'm going to go ahead and add Harry Potter into that Harry one. Harry Potter would be a good one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, uh, co- Mr. Quick, Harry. quick ADD moment. What's everyone feeling on that Aladdin remake? Dude. I, so I, far, I like it. So I like what I see. I will say, I'll quote you from last episode. Hey, you know, I sold this. <laughs> this lamp to a fresh prince. No refunds. I was, dude, I cracked up so hard. Yeah, so yeah. Hard. I will say that I, I, I'm, it's one of those things because the first time when they showed him blue, I was like, he don't uh, look cool. I don't well, know. Looked, Good luck with that. I, I think it was this. They, I think they have the same problem they had like when uh, Alita Battle Angels first preview. The CGI uh-huh. was rough. It was really rough. But when you went to the movie. They had cleaned it up, and you know it finally got where it looked realistic and looked right. And I'm well, maybe hoping, that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, I think it was one of those like it was kind of like with the Deadpool two commercial where they're like, "Are oh, really? We don't even have his arm animated yet." You know that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah. I think I was very dubious <laughs> at first, but I'll, after hearing a little bit of the song, and I mean, and Smith came out flat out and said like, "Yeah, I am not Robin Williams. I am very well aware <laughs> of that, so I'm gonna have to do my own thing." And it's like, okay. And I appreciated that. that, that he didn't try to mimic Robin Williams. He made his own way. And I think there's always going to be people who are like, Robin Williams is the only person permitted to ever do Aladdin ever. Yeah. Except um. for in the second movie where they got another guy to play the genie and he actually did really good. Or the TV show where he did the, that same guy did the genie and he oh, did really yeah, good. Oh, yeah, you're right. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. So, I mean, it can be done. I just think people get very stuck on an idea mm-hmm. and then they can't let it go. Yeah. So, all right, let it go. On. <laughs> um, the third one is The Quest, where the protagonist and, or, or, and companions, or not, uh, set out to acquire an important object or to get to a location. Um, they face temptations and other obstacles along the way. Like, that sounds like the Force, the Force Awakens, and the Last Freaking Jedi all yeah. rolled into one. <laughs> I, actually, I think the best example of this would be uh, Her- <laughs> Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Yeah, you know. Lord of the Rings. What? Yeah, oh yeah, Rings, yeah, sure. If you're gonna go with the obvious oh. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Uni. Go ahead. Um, the fourth one is Voyage and Return, where the protagonist goes to a strange land, and after o- overcoming the threats it poses to them, they return with experience. For example, Alice in Wonderland. Mm. Um. 
Uh, okay, I guess they have Mad Max Fury Road on here. I mean, technically, <laughs> I, I, I guess they, I mean, they do go to that other area that looks a lot like the first area while fighting cars from all areas, and then they go back <laughs> to the area they started at. Technically, it's true, and it was a the great Sp- movie, but uh, a little the weird. SpongeBob SquarePants movie is also listed <laughs> as a voyage in return. Uh, That's yeah, I guess technically I mean, that would be accurate. I yeah. haven't seen it, so I'll take their word for it. Um, then there's comedy, which a light and humorous character with a happy or cheerful ending, um, a dramatic work, and with the central in which the central motif is the triumph over adverse circumstance, resulting in a successful or happy conclusion. Mm, Romeo nice. and Juliet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says the majority of romance films fall into this category. Dim rom-coms. The, the prop- yeah. the, what was it? The Proposal? <clears throat> yeah, Ryan Reynolds and uh, What's-Her-Face. Yep. Yeah, Sandra Bullock. That was it. That was a good one. I like that one. We can go back to the eighties. Some cheesy stuff like Mannequin. This oh, stuff is hilarious. God. Cheesy, cheesy, super <laughs> cheese. That is a classic. Yeah, Such a classic. Good. I actually watched a stupid video. I think it was from Dan Bell. You know, he does the urban exploration, but he actually oh, yeah, went yeah. back and revisited the locations from in those malls and in those shopping centers in New York oh, yeah. as they were like just three or four years ago. That was a twenty-five minute video that I do not feel I wasted my time with. <laughs> so, Excellent. comedy. Yep, and then tragedy, which is when the protagonist's character's flaw um, or greatest mistake is their undoing. Um, the their unfortunate end evokes pity at their folly and at the fall of a fundamentally good character. Mm, the Lion and King. They cite examples like Macbeth, uh, the picture of Dorian Gray, Bonnie and Clyde. Well, that was that was not so much a story as they're just their actual life. <laughs> yeah, <it's> <laughs> but, true. <laughs> so that's uh, I mean, technically, Julius Caesar. So you know, that was apparently yeah, that was a, that too. was a real thing. I guess mm-hmm. you know who knew. Hmm. Uh, Hamilton. I actually don't know. I've never seen Hamilton because I live in Oklahoma, and the closest thing we have to Broadway is Texas. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right, mean, that's I mean, come on. Let's be. Right, we have a couple great places. Like, I got to see the Lion King play here, but uh, there's only so much we can do. We're just very tidy. And lastly, I understand. Um, last one is rebirth, in which an event forces the main character to change their ways and often become a better person. Really good example is a Christmas Carol. Mm-hmm. Xanus. Uh, Groundhog Day. Oh, I love Groundhog Day. Oh, Xanus Groundhog Day, one. yes. Uh, oh, yeah, Xanus. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, yeah, that, that's, I didn't know that was a trope. I mean, I knew it was a trope, but yeah, the Rebirth would be the one. So, yeah. yeah. So that was, yeah, the seven basic plots, and really almost any story mm-hmm. is going to fall into those seven things in one form or another, or maybe a combination of the two. I mean, you could have a return a voyage in return that's a comedy uh it's a, it's a let's see oh yeah you Mon- can have Mon- a monty python and the holy grail a mix and match of all of those <laughs> um in fact i think the i also mentioned the hero's journey <laughs> in yeah, our notes in and the hero's journey is something that everybody <clears throat> is familiar with and everybody knows it's star wars it's lord of the rings mm-hmm. it's harry potter it's you know yeah, I love. I it's got a little. It's got a little, the uh, roundy, noey like circle thing. It says it, it, supernatural aid, threshold guardian, threshold helper, mentor, temptation, abyss, death, and rebirth, transformation, atonement, return, <laughs> call to adventure, <laughs> and it just goes in circles. Like, yeah, that's uh, it's pretty much all those stories. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> so. Like always, when we when we we're gonna do one of these, ins- <laughs> everyone pretty much has a good idea on on inspiration mm-hmm. and something that uh, inspires you, makes you want to do a thing or feel a thing, or gives you an idea, or makes you get off your fat potato eating butt and do something. But I like my taters. Mm-hmm. Gonna get me some French fried potatoes. Mm-hmm. That's right. Hey, fate. Mustard with a mustard. 
reckon I aim to kill you with it. <laughs> also a great movie. <laughs> yeah. Billy Bob. So with uh, plagiarism, uh, basically, in a nutshell, is just outright copying another's work while claiming ownership though, through lack of proper quoting or uh, attribution. Permission to do so uh, was neither sought nor received, so its unmasking usually leads to painful repercussions for plagiarism. Look at uh, most politicians' speeches in one form or another. It seems like every every <coughs> year someone's getting caught like plagiarizing a speech from somewhere else, and it doesn't matter what side because everybody's stupid. Well, I it think they ha- they all have the same writer. Well, that is if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Is, there's like one dude that just yeah, writes like yeah, I don't I'm political not, speeches. <laughs> yeah, and he still doesn't do it. And the, you know, here I was. I've been watching Babylon Five again, and I will say some of the most inspirational speeches are done by Bruce Boxleitner or uh, the uh, the guy that played Jakar in that show. Who you most everyone else knows the guy that played Jakar from that show is the one armed man in the uh, the movie where he had only one armed. What was that with? <laughs> Harrison Ford, I forget what it's called now. Mm-hmm. Not Patriot. Fugitive. Fugitive, yeah. Oh. Yeah, he was the he was the one armed man as in that. But uh David uh something Katsoulis, I think David Katsoulis. But like some of the speeches that they give, you know, they're leaders and they're supposed to be inspiring and they're written by uh uh J. Michael Straczynski, and they're very good speeches and they're delivered perfectly. And then I see speeches from like all of our presidents or or Congress or the Senate. It's like they're stuttering and they're they're like falling over themselves, even though they're reading it. It's like can can you guys not just get basic like how to speak in public classes? Do all this money you guys have out there, you should devote one tiny room in, into the 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 Senate building and like how to speak properly to an audience. Like maybe read the speech beforehand, for example. I was gonna say maybe maybe their teleprompters are messed up. I don't know. That, I'm not give them that, benefit that, of the doubt. That was one bad. <laughs> Poor Obama. <laughs> he had a real hard time with teleprompters. He is not uh, not great off the cuff at times. Great at reading, not great off the cuff. And others, they're not good at either. So I can't really can't really fault them for that. And I can only imagine, at least with you know, like a president. You're only speaking to the entire world, so I suppose the there would be a, world. <laughs> be a little pressure. You know, everybody's going to be hearing what you're saying or picking it apart. Given overseas, most countries they don't give a shit what we do, which is awesome because neither should we. But that's beside the point. But yeah, seeing seeing all that stuff. Come on, guys, you can do better. Just just be inspirational for a change. Don't fumble. Don't fumble the words. So plagiarizing is bad. It happens a lot. Um, who was mm-hmm. it that recently got accused of that? Uh, I remember back in the day, the the guys that did the Matrix they got sued for plagiarism. Um, some some lady claiming that they had just ripped off her story. Uh, who was the most recent one? It was just, it was a big movie that just came out too. Doggone it! But. Uh, Shoot, now I can't remember. It was one of the, I think it was actually one of the Marvel movies or something like that. But someone's like, I I went to them with that story, and they just dismissed it, and then they made a billion dollars off of it. Did they? Did they really? Where's your proof? I have it written right here on paper. Uh huh. And how do you prove that? I don't. And that's the other problem. Just because you're accused of plagiarism doesn't mean you actually plagiarize. At least on that level, you could just be your uh, try to be sued and get rich quick. Yeah. So that's why you can't. Um, and and I know this. I've tried. You can't send a story to like Pixar or Disney or a company like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they just straight up will send it back. Yeah. Oh, yes. Because uh, and they send it back with a note saying, you know, we appreciate this, but. For legal reasons, you know, we can't read this because if they read it and then, you know, don't don't want to do something it. Something they've got in the middle of production is like it. Yeah, copies it almost has anything exactly. in common with it. Mm-hmm. They they just they're trying to cover their butts. Yeah, like there was I actually saw apparently there was one guy you know the new Star Wars trailer came out and that the Emperor ha, 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 at the end apparently mm-hmm. somebody posted online seven years ago 
when like the Force Awakens came out, like he actually plotted out that it was going to end with the Emperor returning, and that was going to be the key pivotal point in the last movie, and that's what they were going to be facing against <laughs> seven years ago. So, and that's that's kind of a tough situation because, I mean, on the one hand, we don't know that. Mm-hmm. Whoever was writing the last Star Wars didn't see that and go, "Oh my God, that's cool! I'm going to use that." Yeah. And at the same time, like, who there's, the hell is this guy to them? There's, you know, and there's millions of people out there. That, what was it? Uh, I think uh, going back to George R. R. Martin, he said years ago, uh, he actually saw a thread somewhere where one or two people have actually guessed the the end of the, not the show but the books, like the ending he had in mind, almost down exactly. And he had to decide if he was going to change it or just keep it that way because, you know, there was, they may not have gotten any traction. He, he never said, obviously, who it was because that would be stupid. But apparently, somebody's already figured out how Ice and, you know, Song of Ice and Fire ends. They just don't know that they have it right until, I guess, you know, the bo- last book never comes out <laughs> because it's never coming out. It's never, it's not going to happen, guys. There's just no way. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I don't think he's going to make it, like, physically to that last book. No, no. He's, Could he's, be wrong. He's too busy now doing, like, I think the two spinoffs of Game of Thrones at this point. So, nah, he's good. And, you know, sleeping on a big pile of money. <laughs> There's that, too. How do you sleep at night? On a giant pile of money with many beautiful women. <laughs> Plagiarized from The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> that well, was Mr. Also... Castle, right? One of the things that in in writing class that they had said that when you when you are writing something, if you send it in, make sure that you have all of your original writing mm-hmm. of that story so that you can show the progression. And I forget what it was, but there was a big story that came out and it was challenged in court that this very well-known person had written this story and this other person said that they wrote it. Mm. And in the end, the person who challenged won because she could lay it out to the judge. Where the idea came from, how she came up with it, showed all the rough drafts going back 10 years. Yeah. And this other writer couldn't do that when asked in the court documents. Um, well, how did you come up with it? I don't know. I just did. But how did you come up with it? <laughs> Right. I don't know. I just it just came up with me. It just came to me one day. Right. Yeah. And no, that's not how that works. Yeah. It's not how that works. <laughs> that's not how you know. And, works. Right. And so the judge was like, um, "I hate to say this, but I believe her." Yeah. <laughs> and you're fuck. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that's why I because people have said because I have all my original work for the books that I've been writing mm-hmm. since I was fifteen. I have them all. Um. And they've said, you know, why are you keeping these? These are because they're they're really bad guys. Okay? Well, yeah, they're yeah. really really. <laughs> but they show a progression. Crap. Okay. <laughs> it's really bad, and it's handwritten, and it's just it's just bad. But it shows the progression of the story as it went from when I was fifteen until when I, you know, finalized the story in some form when I was in my early forties. So yeah. Yeah. Well, and. The, that's a kind of a big difference between like then and now, because nowadays you can self-publish, and once you and then they can pick you up after that, right? If, and that's know. probably what I'm going to do yeah. is I'm going to self-publish once yeah. I'm to that point. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there, and I'm never going to make money off of it, but I'm okay with that. So I just want to publish my work. Yeah, well, in the, like uh, I think my uh, Mark Tufo, the guy who I've talked about several times, he's. He, his wife talked him into it. He published, I think, on Amazon or something like that, you know, digitally. And then he got picked up, you know, and now he writes, yeah. a, you know, a book or two a year. And, like, I have a couple of fr- friends that write that had their first couple books published and then <coughs> got dropped. And now they self-publish. So it can go either way. Yeah. So, yeah, and, I mean, that's kind of the, the benefit of living in the modern age versus, you know, back in the old days when you'd send in the manuscript, hoping that you wouldn't just get completely ripped off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So what's the difference between inspiration and play, plagiarism? Uh, a lot of our peers get ideas from, you know, things that we watch or read or interact with in some form or another. 
Um, like I said, said earlier, I took the idea for Xanus from Angel from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and used that as the main main premise, you know, and, you know, guy did bad things, was cursed and got a conscience or a soul and tried to repent for it. So was that plagiarism? I mean, the, the very base of it, maybe, but really I took just a general idea of one of the old tropes of, you know, rebirth, basically, as, as uh, Yunfei had put in there. And well, I mean, you can mimic something or a fantasy. give a, you know, this inspired me kind of mm-hmm. change. Um, But that's not plagiarism. It's plagiarism if you do it word for word and you claim it's yours. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the big difference is I, I took the general premise and, you know, none of the personality was the same. The obviously not a vampire because <laughs> it wasn't going that far. I like the guy, <laughs> but I'm not going a vampire route. Uh, and, the, and the one time he could have become a vampire, you just went, nope, nope. and walked away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the... that's still one of my favorite moments. <laughs> Ain't nobody that's got time for that vampire nonsense, man. Yeah, a vampire that bit him, he's like, yo, been of the night walkers now. It's like, yep. and nope. <laughs> he just went, nope, and walked away. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't messing with that. But yeah, that's not, that's not plagiarism. Yeah, that's taking inspiration. That is inspiration. Yes. Yeah. So and when someone you know when someone sees something like that and they like they re- re- recreate a version of it in an MMO for example, um, I used a lot of uh, one like with uh, events I used a lot of stories from real world things from the Lore podcast which if you haven't listened to Lore it's a really good podcast and you should listen to it. Millions of people can't be wrong, uh, and I refit <laughs> them in several of the events to work within like the ESO at the time when I was doing these. So it was th- you know things from the like a story where it was literally raining meat down out of the sky like chunks of it, pounds of meat, uh, to the Jersey Lovely. Devil or uh, a haunted tree that was said to be used to you know hang people during I f- forget what era, probably the Crusades or medieval times or. I don't know, 100 years ago in Europe or somewhere. And then it was, of course, supposed to be haunted and people would would get bad feelings and there'd be evil vibes and shadows that would crawl out of it, that kind of thing. And all that stuff was perfect for... Oh, my neck popped. Sorry. Um, Just giving... I It gave some great ideas for short-term events, for like, you know, two-hour events to here's a yeah. problem, here's how to solve it, and... Each one of them was unique, but each one of them was taken from a real life event that I heard off of that podcast, and it made made something better than a kidnapping plot. Back when uh, <laughs> Sobzi was still playing, and I, I'd already been doing this when you uh, joined Ren's little side guild, I would send him on missions. Like the first mission to get in was terrible, and that was my own creation. Uh, and then the sec- other missions, like I'd send people out on, it would be this or that. But then Sobs is like, hey, dude, why don't we just do some Dark Brotherhood quests, but make them EverQuest uh, <laughs> friendly? I said, that's glorious. So we, we kind of started doing some of that before Yo. things kind of fell apart. But man, it was fun, and it, people were engaged. Like, these are freaking awesome. We just didn't tell them it was from Oblivion. Right. <laughs> well, no, and see, and see, that's, I mean, that's great. Because you, you get the idea, and you you adapt it. Yeah, it was adapted, yeah. kind of like yeah. those horror stories you're talking about. Well, yeah, and you, you made you. It was fun for you guys because I mean, you're like, <clears throat> you know, but you had yeah, they have you, no you, idea. You had great ideas from that, and <laughs> and it made other people they, they got a lot of enjoyment. You you made them made them told us the same story in a different way and made them feel it, which yeah, that's kind of the whole point. So, um, you know, and it, the thing is with all of that stuff, the inspiration it, it's a wonderful and it's an amazing thing. And anyone that says they aren't influenced or inspired by something in their ideas or their writing is either one of two things. Uh, they're Why? either full of shit or completely so, uh, unself-aware, or maybe they're just completely unaware of how full shit they are. Could be, yep. I guess. I mean, every story. writer that I've ever met ever in my whole life will be able to tell you what other writers or what movies or what situation inspired them to write the story that they're mm-hmm. writing. Mm-hmm. And if they can't, <clears throat> then they're completely out of touch with their own writing because nobody, they're like, oh, this is a completely original. No, stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even finish that phrase. No, it's not original. Yeah. I mean, when I was in writing school, writing class, uh, creative writing, 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of fun, by the way. Anybody, even if you don't think you can write a yes, it is. sentence, go to a creative writing class if you ever get a chance to take it. They are fun and they teach you a lot about yourself and they really hone your writing skills, even if you're not going to be a writer. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a little thing there. There's, there's always creative writing classes and they usually don't cost very much, you know, $25, $30. Go to one. They're, they're worth it. Anyway, I was at a creative writing class for school. And that was the first thing the teacher said, first of all, you know, nothing original under the sun. He mm. quoted Ecclesiastes. He said, there's nothing new under the sun. Don't try to claim that you are. And not even 15 minutes later. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> when he's going around the room and he's, you know, who's a writer? And a lot of us raised our hands. And he says, are you a writer or do you want to be a writer? And I said, I'm a wannabe <laughs> writer. I'm pretty good, but I obviously need work. I wouldn't be here. And <laughs> right. uh, I'm here to learn and to grow. And he said, you, I'm going to like next. <laughs> was, yeah. He was like, suck up. Is it? Yeah. Well, I know how to talk to writing teachers, but anyway, the next person was like, well, I've been a writer. I'm, uh, uh I've got some small, some, uh, short stories published and da, 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 and was going on. I swear 10 minutes just yapping about, about herself. How, how great they are and how they, <laughs> yeah. how they, and he write listened. All their, how they he write had all the their most, stories in a Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. He had the most <laughs> attentive <laughs> look on his face the whole time she's talking. And he's like, sorry, are you done now? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, here we go. Oh. Uh, she's like, well, I can stop now, I guess. He's like, oh, okay. Gosh. So who inspired you? What do you mean? Who inspired you? Where did you get this idea? Oof. Where did you read it? Where did you find the idea in order to take it and run with it in this new direction? Which it wasn't a new direction, by the way. I have an add on to your story, Jazz, and you're done. <laughs> it, was, it was like straight out of Romeo and Juliet, but okay, I'll, I'll, I'm almost done, I promise. No, you're good. Um, <clears> and <throat> it was just like recapped <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, which is why it was so funny. Uh, oof, um, oof, like no. right down to like the teenager thing. I mean, in, in the, the whole family, thing, the Romeo and Juliet. And, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing. And she was like, well, you know, I did this and this, but I I came up with this on my own. I, I've never really been much of a reader. Um, <laughs> never say that in the writing class, by the way. Oh, like half my class was like that, too. Yeah. So I, think like, oh, I don't like to read. This is off of you. So the writing teacher just said, that's not true. You can stop talking now. And then he moved on to the next person. But it was really funny. But anyway, go ahead, Strafe. We have, I have a tag onto that. Uh, uh, and I hate it because... She's not a bad person. I just didn't think she was very experienced in that kind of thing. It was kind of self-inflated ego kind of thing. We were at a dev drink up when I was still in grad school. And I had brought my laptop. We were meeting actually industry artists working in the game industry. Ooh. I had brought my three sculpted Velociraptor up there. And, you know, I was hoping for feedback. And I got, he's like, oh, so what do you do? I was like, I'm, I'm trying to be a 3D artist. I'm doing this. I've made this model because, you know, we're doing a character kind of thing. So I picked, Veloc picked a Velociraptor or whatever. Said, this is cool. And he started asking me questions about this. How long have you been an artist? I said, well, I've, I started in uh, getting serious in undergrad. I went, what do you call it? Community college. I did this. I did this. I'm still, uh, I still got a lot to learn. Kind of like you did, right? Yeah. Being humble will get you the world, folks. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> then <clears throat> a, a fellow student that shall remain nameless was then asked some similar questions. We showing something off. How long you've been an artist? I've been an artist since I was in kindergarten. I did all this stuff, but then I was out of face. I wanted to face palm so hard, and I could tell the look in the the look in the face of the professional. Um, it just spoke volumes. It's like your professor. Yeah. He wasn't rude, but he was like, mm "Hmm, okay, I gotta go get a drink now." And he just freaking split. Yeah. And, I just, <laughs> and this other student looked at me. I looked at them, and the other student was completely oblivious. And I, was, I felt, you know, I felt just give it a thumbs up. Hey, you did. <laughs> adequate <laughs> yeah yeah it's it was rough but i mean that that kind of stuff happens i don't think people realize the, that, the severity that, of some of their words that goes into the com yeah either you're full of shit or you're completely unself-aware yeah. yeah yeah and when someone reads your stuff if they can come up with the books that inspired <laughs> you that's awesome by the way and impressive as hell because I had that happen at a writing conference that I went to and they read a short snippet. I brought something for them to read in class because we were all supposed to. Yeah. And they read it out in class. And then he said, now I'm going to ask you if I'm right. But first, the question is, what books did you read as a child that promoted you to write this way? 
And I started, he said, oh, don't answer. I'm going to answer for you. And I want you to tell me if I'm right. And he listed all the books I read as a kid. I was like, okay, that's, that's, and he was like 80. He was an old, old oh, writer. So he I knew, what his he, name. Knew he actually all, turned out to be later. I looked him up and he was like a sci-fi guy, but oh, that's cool. Way back, like before there were like, uh, 1994 kind of stuff <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> way back there. Um, and but he picked, he knew that I liked Isaac Eisenhoff and he knew about Anne McCaffrey. He listed my two favorite writers in the whole Oh, world Anne McCaffrey, yes. Just by reading what I had written. He says, you write just like they do. He says, I'm very impressed because you've obviously mimicked them and that's good. Yeah. Hey, Strafe, you need to go push to talk, man. Everyone's echoing through your mic. Oh, so I've been Uh-oh. trying to get your attention, but you're, you're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take first it time anymore. Even said anything, man. It's been I did it twice in the chat, trying to be subtle about it. Oh, I'm yeah, he did. He did yeah. say that, but I thought I couldn't hear the echo, so I thought yeah. maybe he did it already. But no. yeah, sorry. All right, carry on. Sorry about that, man. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that it, it's cool and it's important for in any art, in when anything, whether it's role play, storytelling, artwork, anything you see, read, study, mm-hmm. it's going to come out in what you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, you, you're, you know, a lot of your personality will come out in that as well. But it, yes, you know, if you if 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 somebody else is reading your stuff and they're like, I can tell where this is inspired from. And they say, so what inspired you? And you're like, it's all original ideas. Ooh. <laughs> I'm afraid. Yeah, don't do that. Especially if you're in a class. I'm afraid it's not going to go too well for you. No. Yeah. It, no, it, it, like, so I was. Like yeah, I was said, more than humility. Ego. Humility will get you a lot farther than uh, ego. And a lot of things. I took, yeah, dude. I took um, writing classes. My first major was going to be for creative writing, and then I switched it to art because I, I just you love draw art good. So much. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so I, I got to see in both of those classes or sets of classes, there were people that their head was so far up their bum they couldn't see how full of shit they were. Like. It was amazing, and yeah. especially in the writing class. Because, yeah, she would, my teacher would ask, oh, my gosh, she was a hippie. She was great. But she <laughs> would ask, you know, well, what was your inspiration? Where did you, you know, where did you take inspiration from? And there were, like, half the class would be like, oh, it's all mine. <laughs> it's yeah. like, no, no, it's yeah. not. No, it's not. Nothing <laughs> is all yours. And that's, in my role play, I take from characters I see in movies. I borrow from books, characters in books, like the most, the best female lead I've ever had. And I, and I'm sure anybody who's familiar with the character would probably go, aha, Killashandra Ree is from an, in a McCaffrey book. And I fell in love with that character and I read the whole series and you can see her in my opinion, in some of the characters that I play, because I loved that heroine type yeah uh imperfect swearing blunt who does that sound like right. um <laughs> it's my thing and i loved that and i fell in love with that i was only like i don't know i started reading those books when i was like 11 or 12 or so so i fell in love with those books and you can tell because of the way that i create my characters it isn't really honest if i turn around and say oh i came up with this you myself originally. yeah because I know what inspired me. I can tell you the female leads and the in the shows and the movies that I watch mm-hmm. that I'm taking a lot of that when I write into my books. Yeah, well, and one of my one of the author Mark Tufo with the zombie fallout and all that stuff, like I, he's not in the books. I think I think uh, the character Mike Talbot's kind of a a representation of him, but Talbot's wife Tracy, that's Tufo's actual wife's name. The, the boys that Talbot has, those are his actual kids. Uh, the dogs, like uh, Hen- was it Henry the Bulldog and another one, he actually did a series called The Book of Riley, which was his other bulldog. And it was all from the perspective of the bulldog in a zombie apocalypse. It was like a, a four mini books. And they were, you know, and they had a little, a little yapping Ben Ben. It was like a terrier. And, you know, he would eat floor fries. He was always looking for floor <laughs> fries. And it's super, but he wrote all that based off of people that he knew. Or I've actually seen him. He's actually he's very active with his audience, and he's actually said, "All right," un, he calls it the unfair contest of the day because he he put out a challenge, 
and he'll just pick whichever one he likes most, and it has absolutely nothing to do with anything other than it's completely unfair, and he just does what he wants. But he's actually asked, like, hey, I need a I need a name for a character. Anybody willing to, you know, prop up their name to be used in the book, let me know. And, he, like, everyone will be like, I'm good, I'm good. You know, the, everyone will obviously, all his fans will volunteer their own names to be appear in one of his books. Completely free of charge. I mean, it'd be awesome. But, I mean, it, no, it's... He uses he uses what's at hand. He's you know he knows how to knows how to work with the fans, and he knows you know knows where his inspirations come from. It, like he did a did a second series based off of the zombie one called Lycan Fallout, which happened hundred or two hundred years later, and that came from apparently his wife turning to him one day while they were out shopping, and she said, "You know, werewolves are real popular right now." <laughs> And he looked at her, and he looked at her, and said, "And and he he actually it was at the end of one of the the books or the foreword, and he's like, she knew what she had done. She I she didn't give me an idea. She didn't give me anything. She all she said was, werewolves are real popular right now. That's, that's and it germinated right into a you know a, a, a like a three book series. And he and the way he did his werewolves." Oh, it was good. He did a really good job with werewolves. Very, very good. They were very terrifying, can I, actually. Can I take a, a stabbing guess? Hmm? It was Talbot a werewolf? Uh, actually, no. They continued off. He was he was an unfinished vampire, and the werewolves because oh, okay. it was it was a hundred years after the zombie apocalypse. Now, um, even though he is real careful because his zombie apocalypse books haven't finished, so he you know. He was a little vague on some of the details, but he was since he was unfinished. Talbot had survived all the way to that point, but he had been a funk because his whole everything he knew in life had died off hundreds of years ago. But without all the humans around, because uh, the zombies had largely taken all, taken all taken care of all that, and humanity was in like small villages basically at this point. But the werewolves no longer had a food source. And then one of them got it in their head that they should be rulers of the planet. So they started, instead of having the separate tribes and things like that, or the packs that werewolves had always had, he gathered all the werewolf packs into one. And they were the true lichen, but when they would bite people and leave them, they would be like werewolves. So there were lichen, and then there were werewolves. And they had, uh, it was a really cool... It was a really cool way of doing it. He did a great job, and it was basically humanity's fight against, you know, lichens and hordes of werewolves whenever the full moon would come around trying to keep the last bastards of humanity alive. And you guys were really talking good. about riding style earlier, right? Mm-hmm. So, because I love Ari Salvatore, and I know Barry Craig Coffee's drift, I like the way he did his stories, and that's kind of how I did my lore stories as well. So people say, hey, we love your stuff. I'm like, oh, thanks. It's just... It's just battle chucks. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you're he just... had good ones, but he had a couple stinkers in there that he said he didn't want to do. Yeah, he got he got so good with some of it. It was kind of like uh, they're throwing well, a lot there of was money a at point, you. There was a point when he took because I've met him a few times. He actually lived when I was up in Maine. He lived in Massachusetts, I think, and would often come up to do signings and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so my boyfriend at the time. And I, we were, we were playing EQ, found out he was playing EQ, got talking about that and ended up going out to lunch a few times. But anyway, um, I remember he said once that he wanted to stop, like he wanted to retire Drizzt. And he, he brought that to Wizards and Wizards was like, really? <laughs> you mean you the like cash money, cow? Right? <laughs> yeah. They were like, you, you like money, right? You like food on your table? And he's like, yeah. Okay, then. So he ended up writing three more books. Yeah, which is... I just meant the way he like wrote his dialogue, yeah, meant his style. story, and that's yeah. and I liked his style, and that's kind of what I went with. Yeah, but yeah, dude, I, yeah. I'm sure he's burned out of that character for sure. Yeah, Homeland and Starless Night are my favorite. Like they were written so well, in, in my opinion. Yeah, the Icewind Dale trilogy that was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. See, and I've like I said, I had a character very similar to Drizzt in a lot of ways, but not at the time. And then. Finally. Those are the prequels to the Icewind Dale trilogy, uh, Homeland and Sojourner, yeah. and all that, Exile and all that stuff. Yeah, those were excellent. Yeah. I loved the ones when he was, as a kid, growing up in Menzo Branson. I think. Oh, yes. Now. Good stuff. But yeah, and finally, finally, by the way, thank you to Audible.com for giving us a good version of the audiobooks of his, his stuff. Ooh. Because before, like the, five years ago, it was 
either it was impossible to find, and if you did find it, it was shit can garbage. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Oh, it was it was rough, and they it was one of those books like uh, Sib. What was that series that you liked? Was it Wheel of Time? Sort of truth. S- sort of sort of truth. Yes. Yeah. So the Wheel of Time was the other one. Okay. Yeah. So she loved that series. And so it, it was out on Audible. It was awesome. Unfortunately, it was a different narrator for every book. And every narrator yeah. pronounced the names wrong or differently than the previous one. And oh, I hate that. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing pulls you out of a name. What was it? Caitlin, I think, was one of the main girls. Caitlin. Caitlin. So, and then it turned, one of them was Caitlin. Then it was Caitlin. Then it was Catlin. Uh, Colin. Colin. One called Colin. Colin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of C's and K's, man. Right. Like people trying to pronounce my name. Yeah. Yunfei, Yunfei. And the thing is, I always pronounced it Yunfei. Yeah. And I I don't, it's phonetically correct. I love it. (laughs) Well, I I even, okay, so I was in, um, I'm sure nobody watches him, but uh, Sinvicta, I was watching him on Twitch yesterday, and somebody gifted me a sub. And he said, you know, thank you. The guy gifted like five subs. So he listed the names and he, he got to my name and said Yunfei. And, and I was like, just <gasps> blown away. So I wrote in the chat, I'm like, holy crap, dude, you're like the first one to ever pronounce it correctly right off the bat. Yeah. It's like, Especially really? Especially after just reading it. I know. <laughs> you and Fee. But, uh, all right, so, I forget where we were now. That was a fun talk, but I forgot. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. So, uh, yeah, inspiration in our ideas is exactly what we should use to create our RP. And if we see something we love and we want to try to, you know, recreate a piece of that, not just for ourselves, but, you know, for having fun and role play, but also for those around us, you know, unless, you know, you 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 blame constantly where it comes from um, as to why everything sucks. Uh, you know, if they'll enjoy it all the same. That's exactly what you. That's what inspiration is supposed to be. That's you know it was like what yeah, Strafe was saying with taking taking the stuff from the Dark Brotherhood or me from Lore and sharing those stories in a different way with people that weren't aware of them. I mean, it, given yeah. those are it's 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 just a good way to get stuff out there. It's a good way to, place to get ideas from, you know and. That uh, you know, in taking the old ideas and reinventing them, taking the tropes, the cliches, the, the truisms, and and fitting them into the game world and the story and characters around you, is exactly what we we should be doing. That's that's the idea. Because again, there's no new ideas. So if you're inspired by something and you want to see if you can breathe it to life in side of your role play and inside of uh, ESO or Final Fantasy 14 or World of Warcraft or Game of Choice that's exactly what you should be doing. Now mm-hmm. <laughs> you know just don't do it like you meet a t- you need a dark a tall dark elf with a name Dristor and that you know then you might need to flesh it out a little bit. Um but maybe that's just me. Um, that's what <laughs> makes that's what makes the person or the story original is how you take it and use it. Yeah. You got, yeah, you have to, you have to be your own dude. You can't be mm-hmm. somebody else Yeah, or it's going to show through and they're not going to take you serious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Kind of like you take, you know, you have a tapestry, so you, you take all the string apart and then you reweave it into something of your own making. You're using the same yeah. basic form, but you're making it into its own thing for you and those people around you. And how you do that or how well you do that is, you know, that's, that's what matters. Yeah. It, if you, if you kind of weave it back into the same picture, yeah, it's it not as interesting same. as taking and weaving a whole completely different picture. Yeah. You know, it's like when you trace something, I mean, yeah, it looks very similar, but you kind of traced it. I mean, just saying it's not really, not really. Then you just call her outside the lines. There you go. <gasps> no, you don't do that. Oh, yeah, all over the paper. Just scribble so, uh, all over. <laughs> this next part, apparently, is uh, Yunfei just totally, completely uh, plagiarizing some guy off Google Answers. Yeah, oh, I God. just copied and pasted it because I was like, he's, he's already saying it. <laughs> he already it. said it. So, yeah, uh, he's already saying it well. We're so. going to plagiarize some guy off of Google Answers. <laughs> uh, in the context of writing <laughs> a homage, which is another way, you know, inspiration homage, 
uh, is a brand new work that is uh, is a shout out to another writer through referencing the latter's works in some way. There's a lot of ways to do this, and I'm a big fan of of the referencing and the homage. Obviously, I I do it all the time in my speech because I've got a memory that can't remember what you know year the War of eighteen twelve ended. Not eighteen twelve, by the way. <laughs> Uh, but I can remember uh, you don't make friends with salad from the Simpsons from like 25 years ago. Don't ask me why. That's just how it works. So uh, some of the ways uh, to do that are writing something in the style of the other or uh, reusing a famous character to tell a different story or reimagining a work in a different genre or universe. And that's that's kind of the that's kind of the one we do it all the time in because even in a fantasy if you take a character from like you know we just keep using Drist because that's the one we set That okay. poor guy, he's just never going to live it how, down. How about this one? We'll take he's just so Sephiroth. saturated. We'll take Sephiroth. So if you're wanting to recreate Sephiroth. Ah. There you go. So it's something something a little different. You know, clearly the world of Final Fantasy uh, 7 is not really existent anywhere else. But at the same time, you really could drop uh, maybe not the world ending half of Sephiroth into a story because that might be considered a little bit of god mopping, dropping a moon on a planet. A little bit. But like the early parts of the story where he's figuring out all that stuff and and his, his personality, the giant fucking 18 foot katana sword that kind of thing you could definitely drop that into almost any fantasy or even a lot of sci-fi things since final fantasy 7 had a lot of you know sci-fi and steampunk elements to it but you you totally can do that it's just a matter of paying enough attention to do that um but uh for this whatever the method is uh this new work recalls the putative genius of the original author without actually copying the original words. A formal homage also usually involves asking the original author for permission to reuse a character or imitate a style or even rework the entire story. And uh, Yunfei, at, you, you want to read that part since it was actually you that oh. did that? Or you want me yeah, to um, I, I had a character in, actually my first and only character, in um, Ihi 1 was named Elephane. And I named her that because I really liked that name when I read it in uh, one of the R.A. Salvatore books. I can't remember which one she, the first one she showed up in. Mm, it sounds familiar, She's just but this I don't minor character, but she was like a pivotal point for, for, for Drizzt's life. Um, and I remember asking him if I could use the name because I really liked it. And he was like, yeah, sure, I don't care. <laughs> In a video then game? I said, I know he played a barbarian show. I'm gonna forget the server, but um, I also wanted to to go back up here mm-hmm. and like scratch out reusing a famous character to tell a different story, because in writing, yeah, that by definition that's a fanfic. Yeah, you're you're Using doing that, fanfic that in point. role play is probably not a good idea because you are still playing that. You are still trying to play. Jizzle yeah. or Sephiroth or you know and I mean? too many people do that and one they do it yeah. badly and two um we're all sick of it and three uh and if you do at least don't use the same name just you could do all the other stuff and most people may not even figure it out oh well, yeah I don't think there's a different. problem with taking a character and playing that character in role play as long as you don't use the name yeah the problem is is they go the other direction they use the name but they make a completely different character and it's it's they're really not original. They're, they're not really thinking about that. They just want to use something yeah. quick, right? And that's pretty much it. Well, it's it's just something they're a huge fan of, and they, you know, and I get that. You know, I've we all watch stuff when you know you come. It's like when you come out of a really good action movie, and you're like, yeah, I want to go live my life a quarter mile at a time. And then you're like, oh yeah, but I got bills to pay, and that shit just doesn't work. <laughs> so I just gotta go yeah. and deep <laughs> yep. on the couch. You know, maybe I won't yep. shave my head and start talking in a deep voice and working out eight hours a day. But, you know, that's maybe that's just could just be me. Could could just be. Me. So anyway, um, you know, then there's the uh, the step too far. I oh, go ahead. I want to throw something in. I know uh, it's homage, but I wanted to say something about writing styles. 
because you can also take, uh, I don't think it would be plagiarism because you've done it. And I had to look up the, the book series. Well, besides uh, Zombie Fallout, mm -hmm. uh, Adrian Zented. Journal. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chris the way, yeah. The way they write, you know, you wrote, you wrote, I can't remember which character you used, or, uh, Tarvala. You wrote it as it was. First person perspective. Yeah. I mean, and mm -hmm. I wanted to mention that because they're, you know, writing styles too can be copied. Yep. Or, that's true. you know, done simil similarly. I mean, there's all, it's all been yeah. done well, before, but it, it adds a twist to your storyline or to your character, how you do your journals. Yeah. Well, and, and like <laughs> some of the stories I didn't even, I did. It was technically her journal, but it was just me telling the story as it happened from her perspective, even though it's kind of like with the uh, the zombie fallout. Okay, so we got zombie fallout, uh, Adrian's Undead Tales, and say the Dresden Files. Those three are all written from first-person perspective, and two of them are actually supposed to be physically written into a journal by the characters yeah. themselves. Um you know, and uh, Dresden's a little different because I don't think his is journal, but it is. It is no, from it's not journal, but that those Dresden's two specifically, yeah, popped into my head, and I thought that would be a yeah, good yeah. thing to get out. No, and you're right. And each one of them, even though they're both from the first person perspective, and the characters only know what you know, or the 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 reader only knows what the character knows and tells the story as it unfolds before the character. All three of them are written in completely different ways. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Dresden's got a little bit. Dresden has some humor, but it's he's definitely more of a. He's a little bit more down to earth and a lot more uh, cynical in a lot of ways than Dresden. Uh, not Dresden. Uh, the Adrian's Undead Diaries. He's from a very different point of view, unlike a lot of zombie things like Walking Dead and things like that, where they're always, you know, for whatever reason, they're always traveling around. Adrian's Undead Diaries, this guy is on a, a college campus when this all sh this shit goes down, and he hunkers down and turns his campus into, like, he turns it into a fortress. He he makes, he stays where he's at, and he defends his area. And same thing the, with Talbot. The problem they, with they the uh, Walking on. Dead is they always get run out of their little fort after they build it up, pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it, like the way Adrian did it, because it was a book, it was... His the problems that came up were more of the interesting, kind of fascinating, real life day to day problems that you would have, like supplies or gathering wood, or you know, if there were looters, looters and zombies. Actually, you know, he had a, he was actually afraid of being snuck up on them in the middle of the night when he was at, alone at first, and then of course, then there's the act of bringing in more people and can you trust them? And it it was you know it had a little bit of humor here and there, but unlike like say the Tufo and the Talbot books. Where you know one of the first lines, some is, asshole is licking my peephole. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. I love that line. Yeah, he's got shirts that say that. But like the very first interaction with the zombie he sees is it chased his kid to the house. He kid slammed the door, and he's like, "Dad, dad, there's a zombie out there." And he looked through the peephole. He's like, "Look out the peephole, and there's just some asshole licking my peephole." Well, oh, writing that down doesn't <laughs> sound nearly as good as it was when I thought of it, but yeah, there it is. That kind of a thing. Very different mm -hmm. styles, all with the exact same way of doing it. Also, another thing that I've seen on the writing style is using, like, uh, doing, like, a hollow recorder. We mm -hmm. did that a lot in uh, Star Wars. Star Wars, The Old Republic, yeah. Or even a little bit with the uh, hollow tapes from Fallout when you guys did those stories. You're doing them like you're yeah. recording into a hollow. Oh, yeah. Tape. Yeah. Yeah. It's so still first it's, person, but it's. I just wanted to touch it. on that different writing styles. Mm -hmm. In this one, just because it's, you know, I know it's not plagiarism, but it's just, it's unique. Each person, how you decide to put your story out there is unique. Yeah, not everything it has gives to be you a little, yeah. Third person omniscient, you know, where it's like a, an ambivalent God's telling the story and knows all the facts and this kind of that, which there's nothing wrong with that, but there are a lot of other different ways to do it too. Mm -hmm. Um. So, okay, so where was he? Um, so, yeah, so there's inspiration, and then there's the second part of the title, which is when you take it a step too far and you're just flat-out plagiarizing. Um, this one comes in a few forms in my not-so-humble, but incredibly humble because it's the best part of my personality <laughs> opinion. Um, as we've said a thousand times now, the most obvious one, playing Driss Doerden, uh, even naming yourself after him. And, by the way, ADD moment, 
Uh, <laughs> congratulations, because uh, Drizdo Erden is recognized by the Google Docs program and did not ask me to spell check it and demand that it was misspelled. <laughs> so good on you, Google Docs, for having actually put a fictional character in there and knowing I wasn't misspelling some, I don't know, drizzle or something like that. <laughs> that's that's cool because there there are a few uh, fictional characters yeah. in there. You, you want to see dictionary. something really cool? Click on uh, click on uh, Drizzit, and then right click, like you know, put the little cursor in the middle of it, and then what was it? Uh, oh, it's, oh no, you got to highlight highlight the word, and then oh, you can define it. Yeah, and yeah. then you hit define, wow. and on the side, it will actually bring up a little thing. It'll, it'll like link to Drizzo Erden and tell you who that is and what about <laughs> him. I was like, that's super cool. So anyway, good on you, Google Docs, getting up there. <laughs> <laughs> I for well, well uh, I for one welcome our new Google overlords. Skynet is great. Everybody loves Skynet. Always um, be nice to Siri. Mm -hmm. Not me, bro. I'll fight him. I do not have any association with the one known as Strafe, right. who lives down in Texas, and his address is. <laughs> <laughs> and you can or, reach or him remember by... this: you, your humanist turncoat. <laughs> ah, <kid. laughs> Yeah, Mobius did nothing wrong. Uh, I'm always super polite <laughs> to Siri, oh, just in case. And then right. makes fun of me for it. <laughs> so uh, anytime you use uh, you know, an out-of-game character down to the name and the personality, you done already screwed up. It's You just, you know, don't don't use... You take chunks of things, that's fine. Don't take the... Especially the name. In, uh, you know, uh, given I... Like the she did with Elephane... At least you had permission too. On top of that, but were you trying to play Elephant? But that wasn't. Play but that no. wasn't like super yeah. duper well known either. I mean, sure. I yeah. wouldn't have never have guessed. No. So I also I also spelled it very differently. And honestly, it, it sounds like something out of Lord of the Rings more than even Ari Salvatore. <laughs> yeah. Um. And yeah, I, the character different. I was playing was not even close to to mm -hmm. the character that he had created. Like they were two totally different women. Yeah. Wasn't she a moon elf that he met? He, she he got to taught to be a service elf. I remember this crap. I mean, it, what's the statute of limitation on spoilers for? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> sure we'll go well beyond the <laughs> old news. Twenty five to thirty year old she, book. She was the little girl when in Homeland, I think. Oh yeah. When he went up to the surface for his very first raid. And he thought that they were, I don't know what oh, he thought. Oh, yeah, now I remember her. Okay, they were going to go up and have a picnic with their cousin elves or some shit. I don't know what he yeah, thought. Yeah, they all but... got slaughtered, and I was like, I was yeah. reveling in it. He, I mean, she what? She was the little girl that he saved. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I remember. And you her. end up yeah, I remember. seeing her again later. But I really liked the name, and I, and she, I liked that she was just quietly a turning point for the main character. I thought that was really yeah. cool. So, okay, all right, and another version of the plagiarism um, is people that just play the NPCs from the game world, like if you, say, played Antonia mm. Bale in EverQuest 2, or the potato oh. ruler of Uldah, Nanamo, in Final Fantasy XIV, or, you know, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've mentioned those people that actually do roleplay, those mage, mage and characters that do a, another podcast on RP in Final Fantasy XIV, but they're doing that, and and, you know... I, I know that they do that, and and while I they're actually very nice people and they're lovely, and I do enjoy their podcast, or I did when I listened to it and was playing Final Fantasy fourteen. It's unfortunate because while I get loving a character and wanting to make you know more story and stuff like that, it's unoriginal. No matter what stories you make up with them after that, the original character is not yours; it's somebody else's. It's the it's all fanfic, case, right? Yeah, it's basically yeah. That crosses fanfic. into fanfic, and depending on how you how you handle it, cosplay. Yeah, well, and, yeah. and in which this is case, fine in itself, but it's yeah. that's not really something you should bring into role play when you're creating stories with other people, mm -hmm. you know, and, and actually playing these powerful rulers. And then they'd even said things like they would have all these side stories, but then if a new expansion came out and something happened to that character that was they would have to try to rework what they had done with the main story quest is, and it's like, that's, you know, if you don't play that character, you don't have to do that. Cause it, you're basically, you're just plagiarizing at that point. And as much as I hate to have to say that it's exactly what it is. You're, you're just taking other people's work and playing it as if it was yours. And clearly on that one, everybody knows it's not just do something, you know, original, even if you played something similar or close to it, that's that's all well and good, but when you're, you're flat out renaming your character after that, 
But here's the deal. It is their, their it is. sub. It is their game. They can play it how they want to play it. They can. No matter how we feel about it. Which is awesome. They get to do what they want to do because right. they are the ones playing the game. And when they went to Balmong and the rest of the server there uh, basically shunned them for it, everybody else pays that same well, amount and it can happen. That's what I'm saying. This is, yep, I know. This isn't saying what, they can't it, do it's, it. It's saying it's a yeah. bad idea. And it is yeah, you're plagiarizing. Still if you do it, you've got a good chance of most decent role players ignoring you completely. Even not yeah, so decent. and I totally agree with that, but it's still it's their thing. No, you're you can't. Right, and you're right. And you're most people who do that, I in my own opinion, they're gonna keep doing it. Mm, oh yeah. Because they want that power that comes with that character. They want the cool factor, totally. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean yeah. and no matter and what it, we say, it's and in their still case, <laughs> I think it's partly because you know they they just their their personality is super cutesy, and you know it kind of fits with the the character that they're they're taking over. But at the same time, there's there's a lot of downsides to it, and you, you know you, you're why you are right that you can do that. Technically, too, you, on the other hand, uh, Square Enix could come in and say, "Yeah, you can't have that name anymore. That's part of the main story quest." Or the fact that it's actually not blocked is surprising. I know. I was just uh, going to say that. Yeah, that's very. And sweet. you can also, uh, you can, if somebody really wanted to be awful, they could report you to the person you're plagiarizing, and you can be notified to knock it off. There mm-hmm. have been instances of that in the past. Hmm. where people have been notified they can't or or the game has been notified you can't let these people use this name and they yeah um, and then you you log in and your character's name is changed to x mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just remembered something about that actually um when ben and i started playing rift i wanted to play a character named alika because i liked that name and okay. I went to type it in and it said the name was already taken. I'm like, okay, whatever. And come to find out, it's some bitch NPC in the city. <laughs> I'm like, you bitch, you took my name. Yes, and it, it, that's the kind of the surprising thing with 14 is that they don't have, like, in, you couldn't actually, in like EQ2, you actually couldn't be Antonia Bale because I think the name right. was locked. And yes. most of them do. Actually, that. there were quite a few things that you could not be, even outside of the game. Yeah, they actually. There were like, a couple of names that they would simply block. Like Drist yeah. actually was blocked, yes. but people would spell Drist was it like, blocked. It was like um, X triple. It didn't stop, folks. It was triple but X. Can, Drist, I can already say, X. does it actually stop them? Because no. can't they just spell it a different way? That's basically yes. what they did. Yeah. Oh, they did. Yeah. They did. They did. Yeah. But, you know, like when we had somebody that applied to our guild and we just told, I just sent them a no. I'm sorry, not with that name. Yeah. <laughs> and what's funny is. Okay, you can be that creative on a way to get around a block. Be that creative in your <laughs> stories, okay? Yeah. And change Please. the name to something that isn't that. Right. I mean, yeah. Just, and I told the guy that because he was like, well, it's nothing like this person. I made up my own. This said, then change the name. Yeah. Because you're not yeah. getting in here with that name. You're not. Why are you being so picky? Because it's uncreative and it's not allowed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Have a nice day. And it's our guild and we can select who we do and do not want in That's it. That's right. Yeah. And I can play my character way. any way I want. Yes, you can. Just in not in this guild. guild. Not in this <laughs> guild. <laughs> right. And, and I get it because making new characters for me, like the worst part it's of naming. making a new character is naming them. <laughs> I will sit on that, on that screen with... You're f- the name blank for like an hour. Staring, and I mean, staring around is your in the desk game. for inspiration. <laughs> I was going to say, you'll sit on that name till the screen or till it like bleeps you out because of inactivity. <laughs> and you're yeah. like, yeah. no! Meanwhile, meanwhile, Ben's already in game and he's like level 10 now. And yeah. I'm still sitting <laughs> on the name like that. <laughs> well, you know, that's what I like about ESO is that they provide uh, web pages that show all the names of that race's names in game. Yeah. So that you can see the methodology used to yeah, name Lord characters. Yeah, Lord of the Rings Online name. does a does a and similar Lord of the thing. Rings does yep. that. Uh, Tor <laughs> does that to some degree. So I did not use that you until it. I if went to make an Aragonian. Yeah. You always ended up with names and Jazz and and Ashen. You probably remember this. 
Um, you always ended up with like mage pet names like Jabantic. Yes. Yeah, I know. Never ever <laughs> use the random man. No. It's just bad. <laughs> random name generators. You know, the funny thing was there was I forget I don't remember the game, but it was one I I wasn't gonna role play it. I was basically just got it to I think it was like a beta or something like that. And it, I click random name generation. Name has already been taken. Click it again. Name has already been taken. I'm like, why the fuck am I here then? I'm just going to make something That up. is funny. <laughs> that, yeah, that happened to me in Final Fantasy. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, and uh, kind of the last thing on the on plagiarizing and just taking <laughs> stuff. And this one's a little less obvious, but uh, something we've hit on, I don't know how many times at this point, but it still bears repeating. Uh, when uh, someone's playing your character as if they were the MSQ hero. Being that from laziness, unoriginality, whatever, uh, it's technically that I would consider that to be plagiarism. You're just taking another idea made up and stealing it scene for scene, action for action, as if you were you were creating it. Yes, that drives me crazy, and yeah. it's the quickest way yeah. to get a piece of my mind if you start that nonsense. I mean, am I wrong in thinking of that as is a form of plagiarism? It is. It is because the the game wrote a story. You're not supposed to role play that story because that story is theirs. It doesn't belong to you. Yeah, and again, it means you can't be Wolverine. Just cut it out. Be whoa, something else. Well, let's. I mean, let's. What about Deadpool? I mean, same <laughs> deal. Well, you could be a troll. Just be your own troll, right? Well, that's just lazy writing. <laughs> See what I did there? I stole from Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway. <laughs> but yeah, that one, you know, and we've gone over that ad nauseum about just playing the MSQ hero. You're not the MSQ hero. You are just come up with something original on your own. Um, again, like Sib said, and it's a fine point, you can do what you want, technically. You can get away with it, but people around you don't have to stay around Except you. It. And yeah. that's the thing I said over and over again in my guild when they would be like, it's my game, I can play it the way I want. Yes, you can, 100%. You won't be in this guild when you do it, however. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. And a lot of, and, you're, and I would say 90, 95, 90% 90 of most guilds would stand down, you know, stand tall on that policy as well. They don't, yeah. otherwise a lot of, how many of our guilds would have two or three of the exact same character over and over with yeah. a different name and maybe a race? Right. Uh, yeah. Like, That'd be funny, though. <laughs> wait, wait. I am the chosen one. No, no I am the I'm, chosen one. I'm Spartacus. We no, actually, I'm in Spartacus. Silver Circle, we had two guys that role-played the story quest um, arguing about that when I walked in, when Vacarina, you can imagine how much fun this was. Vacarina walked into there, and they were almost coming to blows because they were arguing over who was the better hero because they both RP'd the story quest and were having a fight about it. I killed oh. Mayong first. No, I killed him yes, first. Yes, something along those lines. Yeah. It was about Mayong. That's all I remember. And <laughs> she threw them both was. into jail. That was the first thing that came into my mind. Yeah. Of course she threw was. them both into jail. She said, go to jail. <sighs> Bye. So, all right. Well, wrapping up here. Um, so how do you deal with this when you see it? You know, can you you, you call them out? You move on? Ignore them? Um, and, I ignore them. I right. don't even interact with people like that usually. Every now and then, and you know, we have a few in every guild that I run. We always have somebody who is copying the name of some famous person or some famous character in some famous book or movie. There's always a few, and I feel sorry for them. Um, there's a lot of pity with somebody who can't make up their own name. Uh, or even use the random name generator eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I get it that you liked something and you made a, a name similar to it. And as long as they're not too obvious about it, I don't care. If they're picking a character in a book that I've never read and I've never heard of, I'm less likely to be pissy about it than, say, uh, Corbin Dallas. Right. Um, <laughs> Multipass. Lilu. <laughs> <laughs> Multipass. Yeah. If, if they're doing that, it's going to be really obvious. Or like uh, Spike Lee's character. Not Spike Lee. Um, it's like Spike Lee has... He's no, not character? Spike Lee. She's talking uh, about... Vampire guy. Half vampire walk the... Blade? Blade. 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 Spike I was like, Blade. Blade. It was some kind of I was object. thinking Spike oh, from Wesley Buffy. Knife, yes, darling. probably. I was like, I can... I can James Marsters is... Yeah, I could see I that. I was Spike thinking Lee. Spike, and then Lee kind of came out, but I meant Blade. So, Wesley Snipes is so much cooler than that other dude, but anyway, well, I digress. Yes. Um, it's more the name I was looking right, for yeah. spike or blade or something. It was some kind of tool. Um, so 
Or a snipe. Yeah. <laughs> so they had the, most people don't know what a snipe is, especially people who aren't from the country. Oh, I've, um, I've hunted several of them. Yep. Very, they're very tasty. <laughs> Oddly enough, they taste like chicken. Uh-huh. Don't, don't even go there. Who knew, Anyway, man. I mean, having somebody that that is playing a half vampire and their name is, what was it? It wasn't Blade, but it was something like Blade. It was like a Dagger. name. <laughs> no it wasn't dagger but it was like honed or something like that it was related to blades right, right. and i was like really 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 let me guess you're a half vampire how did you know no <laughs> no rip up application throw over my shoulder big, no go away on sign over your head yeah, uh, or uh, what's the uh, the uh the dunpier yeah, the yeah. damn pair. There was always so many. We didn't allow them in our guild for the longest time. But uh, in, I mean, that just goes to my gripe of I mean, dudes. It, there are very few people that play good vampires. Mm. Ashen did a good one, so did Tiller. Um, and werewolves, because it's just so cheesy. Like most of the time, they're just taking it because oh, that's something cool. I want to be that. I want to put no thought into my deal. And it shows. And it's brutal. And werewolves I still are hate very it. Popular too. right now. <laughs> well, they are, but I mean, if you can't do them justice, then dude, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm this puppy guy, and I love all the ladies. Yeah. Get out of here, kid! Oh God, like, if I have, here. there are too many He's werewolves there. who play pretty puppy who chases a bone and pees on the furniture and pet me and scratch my ears. I'm seriously dude, just going to get out a blade and stab the next person that does that. It's so mm -hmm. irritating. To be fair, though, look at the influence they have. True. Yeah. Freaking yeah. Twilight and. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, see, yeah, that's, that's the, the like, same with Tufo, the, the like and fallout. There was one, actually one werewolf that he uh, befriended, right. Mat Matu, Mat Matu, Matu. It was in the future, so they, their names are a little jacked up. But he was, uh, he actually had, uh, he had control over it because he'd been one for so long. But he right. was also, he it was two 200 years from now after an apocalypse. And he was alone because, you know, not very well liked being a werewolf, but... The way Talbot and him bonded was because he had figured out the secret that was lost to the ages, brewing beer. So a guy that hadn't had a good cold beer in 200 years suddenly found his new best friend. And that was, like, that was literally, <laughs> he was like, he's like, I know what you are and I know you could bite my head off if you so chose, but I'm going to hug you now <laughs> because you've, re re you've reinvented the ambrosia of the gods given he was from <laughs> Boston. So, but yeah, you know, and it was a really kind of a neat take on a werewolf. And he's like, you're not quite right in the head, are you? I don't care. Just have me another beer. Um, you know, it's a, it was a very, you can do silly, even silly stuff like that on a serious character. And he was a very serious character, but he had that, his, he figured out how to make brew. So, hey, a party at his house. Um, but really, when it comes to you know getting all of these things, it's there. A lot of it's this. It's it's just going to be situational. Um, it, you know, how well do you know the person, uh, if at all? If you don't know them at all, I mean, it's really going to be a lot like jazz. Rips, you know, just rip up the application and whoosh, you're you're good. You're good. <laughs> nope. Um, you know, mm -hmm. but if it was say it was uh, if it was me that had come to you with. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I had an aneurysm, and I thought this was going to be a good idea <laughs> if I wasn't who I actually am. I might how, be willing to not rip it up, yes. And right, but how, there would have you, been people, how would you deal with that? Because you know Well, that there have happens. been people yeah. that have joined our guild with stupid names, mm -hmm. and we look the other way because they actually aren't half bad role players, and or or I've just become so jaded at this point, I don't give a flying yeah. fuck. And I'm some not of really them sure created it, it not role playing, and then they went to role play, and then they were. You know, they either they can't afford the name change or, you know, the game. Doesn't yeah, and there's always it. that. I mean, yeah. one of the best young role players that I met long, long ago was Night Fury, who mm -hmm. name she was named before there were name change tokens and she was a raider. So when she became a role player, she still had the name Night Fury. Now he made it work. Mm hmm. You know, and I had it on good value. She was an actual role player. So I overlooked the name. Yeah. Um, There's always that. And. And that was back before I was, you know, cynical. Yeah. I, and, I will also and... say in her defense, also back before How to Train Your Dragon was a thing in Night Furies where, you know, the little yeah. toothless. That was... She really hated oh! me. Oh! Yeah, yeah that, I didn't even make that connection until just now. She was actually pre-toothless, so I will yeah. say in her was. defense. It, that was, get it from you know, sadly, how long ago was that? 12, 13, 15? Yeah. How old is, is 
2005. So, yikes. Yeah, almost 15. Yeah. A lot of years. Yeah. <laughs> she really didn't like my character. I did, God bless mm. Night Fury. To be yeah, fair, know, nobody fun. likes your character. Nobody liked your character. Yeah. <laughs> except for I, I digress. There were, there were like three, four people that kind of yeah. liked him, two of which disappeared. Li- liked, li- he, was a, he was definitely a love to hate. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So, but I but, mean, I believe that you can get past it. I think that there are some people who use a name that is well known and can get off with it, or because, oh, get off with it's a bad example. <laughs> um, uh, and pull it. No, that's bad too. Pull it um, off. <laughs> who can get away with it? They there can, we go. They can. Um, they can like rub it out, right? No. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was bad. Let's try this again. <laughs> there are people who can have a name that is well known and they get a break and they find out they prove that they are actually role players and not idiots. And I am willing to give people a chance. And we even had in our, in our current guild, we had a gentleman who did not have a role play name and we let it go because he was new to role play. And I assumed he would eventually wise up and make a new tune. He didn't, but he did make another character and came off with a terrible name that I then said no you're not doing that look you need an actual role play name <laughs> and give him credit he listened and he was like oh so you didn't like my name and i'm like it wasn't a role play name it's still not a role play name please change the name and yeah. he did and he came up with an absolutely race correct lore correct name and he's wonderful and he actually can role play and he's a lot of fun and i gave him a chance and my cynical heart you know, I, I, I can do it, that it on occasion. It grew three sizes that day. Yes. <laughs> it <laughs> totally but did. Just Man, I am cynical and I am just <laughs> cold sometimes when this stuff crosses my eyesight. And I'm just like, nope, 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 rip, rip, yeah. rip, throw. Well, just so, because his name was Buttcrack McCheeky doesn't mean it wasn't a role play It name. wasn't that. It was, uh, it was, uh, I can't Protect even. The Protect, Protect the innocent. Protect the innocent. Protect the innocent. I can't use his name anyway. Long but duck, the point is. Long duck dong, is, right. It, it was not an appropriate. It was an appropriate name, but it was not <laughs> a name that was good for role play. And um, I really felt very proud of him that he listened to me and went ahead and made a new character. He was and is a role player and yeah. is he listened and he really worked hard to show me that because he was he was <laughs> I think he was wounded. I thought he wasn't a role player, even though I said it just it wasn't a role playing name. He says, "So you didn't think I was really a role player?" Well, no, I didn't. You have any idea but I was willing to give you a chance. Have? Right. You know, and he was like, well, I am. And I'm like, well, I know that. So just give yourself a proper name and people will believe you. Yeah. And it, he did. It, and he can role play. And it's, it's a win. But then we have people who are like, but I like this name. It's a famous person in a movie and it's my favorite movie. Well, that's nice. That's... But there's going to be a lot of people see your name and assume you're either a troll or an idiot. That's great, Tom. Cruise. You either listen to me or you don't. <laughs> oh, wait. Thomas Cruz. Huh? Famous name that people, you know, Tom, oh. like, name your character Thomas Cruz. It's different. Yeah. It's different. So. Hey, man. <laughs> I was going to make a barbarian back in EQ1. Barbarian shaman named Jack, McJack Danielson. I totally could have pulled him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. McJack. Yeah, but then, then you can just role play with him and be like, yeah, I know. I was totally going to be a brewer, too. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> what, do, what do you call it? Jack's I'm brewing brew. some goodies. It's called my <laughs> special juice. They, they just call it something stupid like Jack's Brew. <laughs> Jack's Brew, there you go. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I think that about does. Anybody got anything extra you thought of while we were talking? killed the topic suitably enough. I think we've stabbed mm-hmm. it, roasted it, and put it in the fridge. Yeah. It's going to yep. go bad in there. We're not going to actually eat it. We just put it in there in the hopes that we'll actually think about it when we never crave it again. And we'll find it two weeks from now, moldy and you can stop talking languages. now. <laughs> really? Throwing right all that penicillin now. on it, bro. That's right. That's how you got penicillin. So uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in. Remember, go ahead and follow us over at RPMM Radio, or twitch.tv slash RPMM Radio, RPMMO Radio. I always skip by that so <laughs> fast. They sound like I'm having a seizure. Um, appreciate everybody that uh, you know follows us over there. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And... Uh, on behalf of my crew, I want to thank everybody. Uh, Jazz, Sibs, Trafe, Yunfei, I'm Ash and Phoenix. And remember, See you everybody, later, guys. tune Night. in next time when we'll go over why halflings 
should stop being plagiarized and never show up in literature ever again. Next time on RPM Radio. Play on and keep the roleplay going. The thoughts and opinions of those on RPMMO Radio are just that, and should not be taken as the gospel truth, but pretty close to it. Music, as always, is provided by Husky by the Geek. Visit him at youtube.com slash huskybythegeek to hear all his great video game rock covers and original music.